G Money. Yo. What's up, man? How you doing? That was a lot of. How you doing, man? Because doing I on? like this chair. You know? Oh, about time. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. It's good. It's all right. It's cool. Thank you. Thank you for the gift. <laughs> How you doing, G? Cooling, man. Feeling good. You know what I'm saying? It's been a long, 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 long. What? Well, we have a long week ahead of us. Mm. A valent. Sorry. Said, Thanksgiving <laughs> coming. <laughs> I don't know why my mind was in. <laughs> what? I saw a beautiful that's, that's, woman that's here. I, I thought, like, oh, yeah, she was. Yeah, yeah, she, she, she like took, that. she captured. Nah, let me stop being that. <laughs> how you doing, G Money? Everything's good, man. Feeling good, you know what I'm saying? How's everything? You ain't gonna tell us how's everything. How your week was so far? Everything is great now. You know, I, I checked, I checked a few things earlier. G, cha, ha, cha, ching, G, cha, G, G, cha. I checked, I checked the, I see the alert coming early. I was like, whoa, what's going on here? You know? I can't lie to you, G. I'll be trying to. It's, it's, it's a lot of why? party, a lot of party money coming in. You know, why, why, why do you think? I, why do you in. think I can't lie to you, G? What do you think it is? I really can't. Like, I'm a nice, if, I'm a nice guy, man. Sometimes. Even in my mind, if I try to like lie, mm -hmm. it won't. Like five minutes, I gotta tell you, G. I can't. I can't. I can't, I can't. <laughs> nah, everything's good though, man. Um, get ready for the holidays. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm off this weekend. No parties or nothing. Nice. So, I'm be with the family. Chilling. Thanksgiving fully. Thanksgiving, you know what I'm saying. Cause you know that little boy is not gonna let you nah, keep getting away with all this stuff. You know you're not gonna play with you. He, he like, don't want to let you go anyway. Tonight he like you leaving again. I'm like bro. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow too, bro. He's like ah oh, come on. How, well, what does that do when you hear these things? I want to stay home. You want to stay for honesty? Yeah. It's like your heart strings, right? Yeah, I'd be like, mm, can we cancel the show today? Like, nah, I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what sometimes you be bringing them too. You be bringing them sometimes, yeah, like yeah, when yeah. the school off or in the summer. Yeah, a lot of right. times you bring them and stuff like that. Shout out to Dawson, Shout man. Out to Dawson, what up, man? You know, yeah. what I'm I mean, he don't watch the show. He watch other YouTube stuff on that. Like, oh yeah. You know what's crazy? He, he he don't consider this like he don't consider us YouTubers. I mean, I'm not sure we are now. We read podcasters, but he considers all the other guys he watches like YouTubers and like you know what I'm saying, like people on YouTube and they do their thing. He don't look at us like we really doing this YouTube thing. Like he I feel away my nephew wild. He don't. He don't. He don't. <laughs> send him to my Queen's Flip page. Don't do that. He send don't, him to what we did at the like, beginning. I show him stuff. He be like watching that. He like. Oh, he's supposed to. Next. He goes to someone else. He don't. Do you think as a regular YouTubers tell a story? I think it's just he watched the kids more close to his age and it's just you know like they doing stuff. They doing prank. Not well. Uh, some prank stuff. They doing like they in these cribs and mansions and they doing this and that and they you know so he likes to watch those. So, so we gotta us, do that. Us, us, us sitting here talking, he's like, uh, it ain't for him. We gotta, we gotta, you know, we gotta do that. That's what you wanna do? Oh, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Know, yeah. We, well, we got a mansion coming up, you know, you gonna say yeah, that. Yeah. I, might, I might have to pull up to that. Yeah, I, yeah. Might, might call me out in the battle. Yeah, of so. course they did. Of course they did. Mm. But good to see you. I'm so, excited man. about this next episode. Yes, sir. Um, you know, I'm trying to get this guest for a long time, but before we do that, G Money! Yo! Episode two, one, six, and we made it. <laughs> almost, almost, almost forgot? Almost forgot. I had to double check, old. too. I had to double check and see. We got a special guest. Yes. Brooklyn. By way of Lang City. By way of Lang City. Let me, let me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You just, interfo you just <laughs> interrupted my intro. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. the hat said Brooklyn. He was talking yeah, to Michael yeah, yeah. Brownsville. So, yeah, yeah. by way of Atlantic City. Yeah. Um, By way of Virginia. Oh, how we, how we introduce you yet, man? <laughs> <laughs> Legend. He was number one in the nation. One mm. point. Unique style. He played against the best. Facts. Number one in the nation at one point. How crazy Listen. is that? Round of applause for my man. Mm-hmm. The one, the only, Lenny Cook. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's up, my man? Appreciate you. Appreciate you. What's up, my man? You, welcome. Man. welcome. Appreciate y'all for having me, man. Like it's you been said, like four been years, three time. years. For sure, for sure, man. Appreciate appreciate y'all for having me. Talking about you don't check your DM. Like, what's that? Nah, nah. Why nah. people have to hit that story? Like, <laughs> we all, I don't check my DM. Yes, you do. I don't though. Who checked it? How's everything, Lenny? I'm hanging in there, man. I'm blessed. You know what I mean? Taking it day by day. Welcome to Flip the Script. Uh, welcome, welcome. This this episode is dope for me, too. You know, outside of DJing, you know, I I, I used to, you know, I got to talk my basketball system time. I used to play ball a little, too. So when we get some DJs up here, you know, producers and, and basketball players, you know, it's definitely more, I get a little more excited for that interview, so just to hear the story and just to kind of relate to certain things. You know what I'm saying? So let me pop my basketball Ish, you know what I'm saying? Holy Cross Varsity. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh Panthers. Shout out to Coach Cat. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Gauchos in the Bronx. Okay. So I had my little running, you know what I mean? I had a couple 
You know what I'm saying? I put it against Sebastian in the ice eight. Okay. He crossed me a couple of times. But he said, he, he ain't, he ain't <laughs> Shout out to Bash. He ain't going to mention that. You know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> you know, so like I said, welcome. Welcome, man. Nah, I think it's going to be dope it, episode. Man. Thank you all for having me, man. For real. Did you get it all out? <laughs> um, let me think. Hold on. That, 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 that was a moment right there. I didn't yeah, want to interfere. He, he got in his bag. That was think. a moment. I didn't want to interfere. I, I, got a, I got a few, you know, a couple more. Let me see. Well, I, the, the, those are the big highlights, but, you know, um, Marbury Tournament in Brooklyn. We played, mm. we played there, you know. Uh, Kenny Anderson, left right tournament, went home with the six foot trophy in mm-hmm. the hoodie. You know, if you win that, you, you go home with the six foot trophy. Yeah, yeah, they don't get them out no more. Yeah, they don't do yeah, it no more, right? They so don't I had, get I had them out no more. The crib, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I saw that. I saw that. So, you seen it? <laughs> I didn't play sports, so you trying to make fun of me. No, I just, you know, I wouldn't talk to my friend like that. <laughs> but don't talk to me like that. <laughs> G Money, man. Shout out to you, man. Yeah, yeah. Welcome. Yes. Thank you, man. Once again, thank you. Thank you. So, you know, um, most people know the story, man. You know what I'm saying? Most people know the story. If, if they don't, um, we're going we're gonna to get into it today. You know what I'm saying? But uh, we like to take our time up here and go back and, of course, get the history and, you know, just, you know, take our time with the whole process because, you know, it's a long, long story. It's, 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 a, it's a real uh, uh, passionate story. It's a real uh, serious story, but also a fun experience. And, For you sure. You know what I'm saying? And I think it's a lot of people can learn about um, a lot about you and your character and, you know, the game basketball. You know what For I'm saying? Sure. So. Where were you um, born and raised at? I was born in Lang City, New Jersey. Okay. Raised in Lang City. I left Lang City when I was about 10. Mm-hmm. Uh, moved to Queens. Oh, okay. People I didn't, don't I, know that. I didn't, I didn't get that part of the. Yeah, I, yeah that people, part. I mean, like I said, it's a lot of things that's missing in that story, in that documentary. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But yeah, moved to Queens from. Uh, Pleasantville, New Jersey, and it's crazy because I was playing, I was supposed to have a game, and I get home from school, and my mom just like, are we up and out? I'm like, we up and out? Like, I got a game, man, what about my friends? Like, mm. we leaving, and. When were you in Queens, or when you went, which? Um, nah, when I was still in Jersey. You was in Jersey at the still, time. had a game yeah, that day, but and she, she just. We packed up to leave to come to New York, and it was just like, out the blue, you know mm. what I'm saying? So, moved to Queens, went to IS-59. Oh, wow. Played okay. with Daryl Hill, Ryan Williams at IS-59. Well, Ryan I Williams. didn't even play there. They wanted me to play. Mm-hmm. But that's when I met Daryl, Showtime Hill, and Ryan, High Flying Williams. You know what I mean? Those was those guys at 59 at the time. Wait, Ryan Williams, um, special From effects. Cardoza. Yeah, yeah, special he, he effects. And one in the yep. roll up and all. Shout yep. out to guy those Ryan guys. Yeah, shout out to them, man. Uh, those guys introduced me to New York City basketball for real. And a lot of people don't know that. You know what I'm saying? Because when I went to 59, they was like, yo, you got to play basketball, bro. And I'm like, nah, I'm all right. And I, I never played with them. Mm. So let's, let's, let's go back a little bit. Tell us what it was like living in Jersey. You know, how many siblings were there? I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, Lang City is home to me. You know what I'm saying? A lot of, like I said, the story don't show that, that part. They filmed it. They told me I was gonna be there for the editing and all of that, and I never got the opportunity to do none of that. You know what I'm saying? But Lang City is home for me. I was born in Lang City. We moved from Lang City to Pleasantville, which is like moving from Brooklyn to Queens. No, I got it. But you know what I'm saying? So. Mm-hmm. Um, me, my mom, my dad, my sister Tiara, my brothers Vernon and Darius. You know what I mean? We was, we was the normal household. You know so what I'm saying? It was five of y'all in the house. Yeah. Okay. Yep. You, your, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister. Two of my brothers and my sister. Okay. And so dad was dad dad was always around. Dad, dad was, was around. always around, and people don't know that. Like I don't know where people got that from. I ain't had a father figure and all that bullshit. My dad's still in my life. I just left my dad at 6 o'clock this morning to come here. Mm. Why do you think that people didn't see dad in, in you know, where was dad? Because we did see mom, but yeah, what I about mean, dad? Like I said in the, in the story, my family wasn't into sports, so they didn't care if I played basketball or not. You know what I mean? My dad was just a hardworking guy, average working guy, you know what I mean? And just trying to show his kids how to be men. You know what I mean? And, uh, at the end of the day, he wasn't into the limelight. 
like he didn't he he really didn't even want me to be with Debbie. He 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 was he was against all of that. You know what I'm saying? My mom is the one that was like, let him go. If that's what he loved to do, that's what he want to do. Let him go. You know what I'm saying? But he was the one that was like, I don't think that's right. Which it was right for me at that time. You get what I'm saying? But he didn't he he didn't approve of it. What was his job? What did Pops do? I mean, my dad started out as a hustler, got caught up in the streets and all of that, and that's what made us have to move from Jersey to New York. You know what I mean? When we left New Jersey, it's because my dad got caught up in some street stuff. Yeah. So when he got out, my mom was like, "We gotta leave. We not. She she didn't want to continue to live that way. You get what I'm saying? And we moved to Queens. When we moved to Queens, we moved with his brother, my dad's brother. And we started off from there with nothing. And then we moved from Queens to Brooklyn. What type of person was mom? Mom is just mom, man. Mom is gonna be mom just like everybody else, mom. You know what I'm saying? She 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 want the best for their child. And you can't do no wrong. You get what I'm saying? No matter how many mistakes I made, no matter how many decisions I thought was great or bad. She's always gonna be there, you know what I mean? And she's still that way to this day. Mm. Mm. Real quick, talk about um, Atlantic City, right? You know, people, some people think of Atlantic City, think of vacation spot, think about, you know what I'm saying? Go there for the pool parties, casino, exactly, you know what I'm saying? So talk about, because you know, you say that that was a tough neighborhood growing up. So talk about how that was growing up and and being out there and like what, 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 what went on over there during that time? I mean, Atlantic City is only 48 blocks long. You know what I'm saying? It's an island. It's only 48 blocks long. Most people would think of it as a tourist spot. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, the casinos and all of that. But those people don't get to see the outskirts Mm -hmm. because they don't leave the boardwalk. They don't leave the casinos. But it it get real out there. You know what I mean? And shout out to the mayor that's there now because he's making a change into that. You know what I'm saying? He, He got a lot of things that's going on that's positive. You know what I'm saying? And he bringing a lot of things back to Alang City, which was there before that got lost. You know what I mean? So shout out to Marty for that and his staff and all of that. You know what I mean? But they're doing a lot of great things now. It was rough. It's still rough out there. It's still killings going on. It's still still all of that, but that's everywhere you go. You know what I mean? But it's up to us to make the change, and he's making the change as a mayor. You know what I mean? And and I respect him for that. I am so... Living in Queens, um, you went to 59. How, how long you lived in Queens for? So, real I, I, quick, when y'all left, you know, Pops got caught up. It's mm-hmm. some street stuff. Mm-hmm. But, like, was people looking for him? Like, that type of street stuff? Or he was just wild? Yeah, it was a feds one of him. I mean, he got oh. locked up, got out, and moved to Queens. Still get, he still had to do his time. But my mom just didn't want to be there no She more. didn't want to be there where yeah. they could. So, she wanted to relocate. For sure. Um, how much time he did, if you don't mind me asking? I don't even remember, honestly. Mm. But you remember seeing him in New York. For Y'all sure. were together in New York. For sure. So now being in New York together in Queens, how many years you were in Queens for? I only stayed in Queens for a year before we ended up leaving Queens to go to Brooklyn. And what part of Brooklyn? I ended up in Bushwick. Bushwick, yeah, we saw that. For sure. Like that. You wanted to open up a YMCA and a movie theater. For sure. Something I thought that was dope. That was fire. <laughs> um, you... Tell us what it is. To, to how, so with Uncle, it was cool. Like with Uncle, y'all started all over. It was cool living there. Like how was it over nah, there? No, it was it was cool. You know what I mean. My uncle, my uncle Jimmy, he was a good dude. He opened his arms to his brother and his family. You know what I'm saying. Uncle was on his shit, did his little thing, had his little side hustles or whatever. But it was they remodeled the basement for us to live in. You mm, know what I'm saying? That's love. And. and that was it for that year. You get what I'm saying? He gave basically like me telling my brother, like, yo, you got a you got a year to come to New York right now and get your shit right. Get on your feet. And that's how that's how that was presented to us, basically. Come here for a year, get your shit right, and go on about your life. I like that, but sometimes with, with, with family was 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 uncle like he had to, you felt like Uncle put his foot down as far as like pushed Pops to 
get it together? Like, this is the time I'm giving y'all, get it together. Do you feel like that 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 sort of put the fire under y'all, under your father and stuff like that, under your family? You know what I mean? Because sometimes when you're moving with people, right, you become um, it's, it's comfortable. Comfortable, yeah. Yeah, you may stay a little longer. You may want to stay. You don't leave the time. Was, was your uncle a person that was on it like that? Like, we got to, like, figure it out or? nah he wasn't because like I said he was he he was doing his thing so he was he wasn't he didn't nah he wasn't that like this is what you gonna do you got this such and such time it wasn't none of that you it's just pops I mean? was, it was responsible exactly you got know it. what I mean and he and, and they held each other down basically you know what I'm saying he might be short he might be short whatever the case may be it was never like Oh, this is what you gonna do, or this is what you gotta do. Nah, my uncle Jimmy wasn't that guy. You know what I'm saying? What part of Queens was this? Uh, uh, St. Albans. Oh, I lived oh, wow. in St. Albans. St. Albans, Albans right 174 in Linden. I lived on. Oh, wow. <laughs> I lived. On, I lived on Linden and Farmers. Well, you, yeah, we was neighbors. Yeah, we was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so then <clears throat> you playing ball during this time? Like you said, you left Jersey. You had a game. Yeah, that was. I mean, I was just getting into it, like trying to get into it. You right, know what right, I mean? Right. I was playing okay. with this, uh, with the Power League, um, and I was playing with a team called Nubian Minds at the time, uh, and I was getting into it. Like, it was so many guys that was way more talented, me, talented than me at that time. You know what I mean? That was coming from that area, and it kind of, like I said, it hurt me to leave because I, I was ready. I thought I was ready for. That, you know what I mean? Mm. But it, it was they had the talent out there. They had the Antoine Dozier's, the Pappies. Like these guys had hella talent. You know what I mean? And I was ready to get out there with them. Who pushed you to play basketball in Jersey initially? Nobody. Nobody. You just one day with the school. Just enjoyed. being in the gym, being in the, being in open gym. Uh, one of my teachers was one of the coaches, Mr. Causey. They was like, yo, you gotta play because of your height, and it was basically like. You got to play because you told, you know what I mean? But I wasn't good at all when I was in, <laughs> in Jersey. Okay. When did you get good? When I got here, when I got to New York and started busting ass. <laughs> I had 59. I, I, nah, I didn't play at 59. They wanted you to play at 59. They wanted me to play at 59. You said that, but you said that the um, two people you mentioned – yeah, Daryl, um, Daryl, Showtime, Showtime Hill, and Ryan, Ryan Williams. They they encourage you to play ball. They, like they, they, they definitely you. did. They yeah, definitely shout did. Shout they definitely did. So when you went to Brooklyn, what what happens in Brooklyn now? Bushwick. So I get to Bushwick. You know what I mean? Uh, that was like that summer. I ended up going to Franklin K Lane, my freshman year. Still didn't play. Never played. Nothing. Just played in the gym. You know what I mean? Then you had guys like, yo, you got to play ball. You got to play ball. Never played. Never played. You know what I'm saying? And just playing in the parks. Basically just guys, meeting guys that's out there playing every day. I'm out there in the park meeting new friends or whatever and just started playing. Just like that? Just like that. And this is freshman year. My freshman year, I went to Franklin K. Lane. So in junior high school, when you went to so when you went to Queens, I mean when you went to Brooklyn, did you? Comp, uh, I left. I left when I I left. I, I graduated from fifty nine eighth grade, mm. and then I came to Brooklyn my freshman year. Got it. Got it. I okay. didn't play my freshman year at Franklin K. Lane. And then, so what was the drastic change? So you learned in the park. You learned in the streets. Yeah. I mean, it was just like I said. I got the when I got introduced to to my best friend Damani and Javet and Denton and all of those guys, Dashell, They was always in the park, so that I was always with them in the park, just playing. Marcus, we was all just playing. You know what I mean? This is every day, every day. <clears throat> then uh, one day, the guy Jeff Farley, he sees us in the park playing, and he was like, "Yeah, I want you to come and try out for." The Long Island Panthers. You know what I mean? So I'm like, man, I ain't going if they can't go. Right. So he's like, they can go. And Damani went with me. He spoke to my mom. She was like, it's cool. You know what I mean? So we get to the gym in Queens because that's where they was uh, practicing and all that, trying out and all of that. And 
God bless his soul, Tyrone Graham. That was my first coach, like my first real coach. And he was like, there's nobody in this gym that's good enough to make my team. And I'm like, man, you don't even know me. For, like, you, how, how can you say that? Mm-hmm. And then later on, I got to know that he coached the Lamar Odoms. He coached the Shamika Hossclaws and all of that. He coached Ron Artest. So he felt like it was nobody in that gym that can compare to what he already had coached. You know what I mean? And he I showed, I yet, showed him otherwise. He ain't see you yet, huh? For sure. <laughs> so you went there and, and he was impressed. Definitely impressed. Very impressed. Don't, don't add very. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> don't add very. But but so initially he he said that and I mean it just basically kind of motivated me. You know what I mean? It pushed me. It gave me that drive to even want to play even more. You get what I'm saying? I mean, but what was Jeff doing in the park? He just well, he was part of the program. You know what I mean? But he was a he was from Bushwick. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And he Jeff, he lived park, down. He lived down the street from Decatur, on Decatur, where I lived. You know what I mean. But he was part of that program. You know what I mean. His son played for that program, mm. so that's how he was able to be able to like, yo, I want you to come try out for this team. And then you went there, and that happened. Then what's the next steps now? The next step from there was we traveled. I mean, that was AAU time. You know what I mean. Like we. My era, we didn't. I mean, we had the live period and all of that, but it ain't. It wasn't as big as it is now, or as commercial as it is now. You get what I'm saying? We did the, we did Vegas, we did New Orleans, we did Connecticut, we did all of that, and everybody's like, "Who is this kid?" Forgive me, because I know mm-hmm. you know about you know. I, every time they talk about this, I get lost. What, what, what you mean? Now, okay, because the steps is, and I asked this before. I forgot. I don't know if it was the Booger interview or somebody mm-hmm. an interview that I asked someone. Like uh, by, might have been Sebastian of the steps. Mm-hmm. Okay, they find you. They may see you in the park or somebody. You join a, a team. Mm-hmm. Then how? Like I need to know the steps of the, so I can be with y'all on the same page. Yeah. So I mean, is it if you if you if you play for the Long Island Panthers, what's next? What's the next right after that? Well, that that's up, gonna. Up to, up that, to you. I mean, that's where you re- that's where you really become nationally ranked. It ain't about high school sports. You know what I mean? At my time anyway, because my 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 school didn't play against too many teams elsewhere. Right. You get your name from playing against all these other AAU teams around the country and playing in all the top tournaments. You get so, what I'm saying? So what does so, AAU stand for? I'm sorry to cut you off. Do we know what it stands for? I forgot what it stands for, I honestly. Me, me too. I forgot. <laughs> Come on, I man. Just, I just I'm know. 40, bro. I'm, nah, I'm, I'm, done, I'm done with that. I'm done with that era. I'm done with that era. But I just know AAU know a, basketball yeah, yeah, is just, just where you want to be at. And especially if you're on that main circuit. You yeah. want to be on the Nike circuit. You want to be on the Adidas circuit. You want to be on the Under Armour circuit. Those are the Panthers, Riverside. like Yeah, yeah, for sure. Those are part of an AAU program. Yeah, yeah. Like, Like, a lot of these teams... Amateur a lot of people union. got teams now that's yeah, yeah, that yeah. they consider AAU teams and they're not AAU teams. Right. Okay. You get what I'm saying? What it's a lot of those mm-hmm. that people was creating teams and saying this is an AAU program and it's just a traveling team. You get what I'm saying? Because I can go play, I can create a team and put them in different tournaments, mm. but it's not on the AAU circuit. You get what I'm saying? So how do how do they how does so we don't know how a, a team can become a part of the AAU. I mean no it's a process like these these guys get sponsored from Nike Under Armour Adidas, Adidas. Yeah. like this these teams are sponsored so it. it's that's in that AAU circuit got it okay good they get invited to tournaments so that they'll they'll yeah. fight like a like a Panthers they want the like, top team yeah, man and wherever whatever the top players is on them teams them the teams that's going to be sponsored thanks. So the Long Island Panthers was an AAU program. Definitely. AAU. Shout out to Long Island. That okay. was Panthers, Riverside, Gauchos. Uh, it's, the list goes on from that. You gotcha. know what yeah. I mean? Thank you. Now, now I'm, I'm up to date with y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm up to date with y'all because y'all don't want to tell me, man. Y'all be looking crazy. Amateur <laughs> Athletic Union. There you go. You know, it there came you go. to my brain. I, I, never knew that yeah. I don't know where it came from. I just, just knew I play A. A- I, all I know, I play AAU. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Nah, so they had AAU. They, 
Uh, uh, they had CYO also. Yeah, they did CYO. CYO also yeah, another yeah, like, yeah, program, yeah. like a little yeah. situation you playing that too. So those are like, it makes sense what you're saying now. I'm thinking about it now. If you play on a, a school team, you, you only play against certain teams in, like in the school in your district. So like, I play the Holy Cross. I, I play against schools like Malloy, Christ the King. Exactly. Uh, Severian. Like, I play against those schools. And that's it. So when you play on a I mean, you may be in a tournament. You may be in a Christmas tournament. Right. That may be have a team from somewhere else. Right, right. But that, that ain't where the kid really get their glory or get their ranking from. You go get like what I'm viral, saying? So, so to speak. Like, you know what I'm saying? You, you'll go viral. Yeah, go really viral. Like, team. Can you we didn't have viral. States? Yeah, but so. You yeah, may you be in a Christmas tournament in Maryland or wherever, you know what I mean? Right. Or you might, but you want to be on that AAU circuit where you know that Lenny is there tonight. So such and such is going to be trying <laughs> to compete against Lenny. Right. You get what I'm saying? It's different than me playing at LaSalle when I played at LaSalle and playing against Rice. Now don't get it f***ed up. Rice was that shit. Was fire. They beat us every time, but I got mine. That's all that mattered at that time. <laughs> but they had they 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 was the that was the team to beat. Rice and St. Ray's. That was the team to beat in the Catholic League in New York City. Big facts. My team was trash. I ain't gonna lie. So wait, hold on. I'm, I'm trying to catch up again. Let's do it. So Rice is a part of AAU. No, no Rice is in the. Uh, Catholic League, well, was because Rice is closed now. Now Catholic League is a CYO. That's where nah, nah, that's, nah, that's, that's high school. That's on. a high school basketball high school, team. All right, so Harry, you ever catch me outside right, playing? That's a high school basketball team. Of, that's a, where a, that's where your boy Kyrie went. That's where uh, Kyrie went to Rice, right? One of them went the to the Rice. The problem is with this, this is what we're gonna stop right now. Oh, yeah. right. Man, you just need yeah, to yeah, catch up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, having basketball <laughs> conversations. I'm trying to. Yeah, 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 right, yeah. Look. See why? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, what, right, what's right, up, right, man? Right, I don't right. play sports. All right, so look. I watch this wrestling. Yeah, yeah. Look, AAU, CYO, those are different. That's what he said. Yeah, those are different leagues or programs that you could, you know, like you play on certain teams, like he said, like Panthers, Riverside. Those teams, right? They get invited to the tournaments. <laughs> so, <laughs> like. I play out of town too. I played in Rhode Island. I played Virginia. Like they, they will travel. Like they invite yeah. you to certain tournaments, and then you go out there. You play against teams from California, from Toronto, whatever. They fly people in and for that for those big tournaments. So you playing the best of the best in the world. You know what I'm saying? What high school you went to, Flip? I went to eleven of them. <laughs> Me too. I went to eleven schools. <laughs> Me too. So I, I went to uh, Van Buren. Okay. I, I they had a basketball team. Yeah, but I didn't play. Yeah, but I they went, had a team. They wasn't an AAU team. That was the high school team. Oh, got it. So yeah. Rice? So Rice was a high school? Exactly. Yeah. Got it. Just say that's, that. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm so fascinated. Yeah. So listen, but, chill, right, so, Rice, is, Rice is in the Catholic, the Catholic yeah, league. Yeah, that was the Catholic league. So it's high school, but it's like, like Van Buren is public school. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Got so it. Van Buren is like Van Buren, August Martin. Hillside, Hillcrest, all of them. So they'll play boys against, and girls. Like, they play against, against, okay, got it. Public school. Yeah. But Rice, like I played against Rice because I was I went to Catholic school. But those are the people that played in Madison Square Garden, the big high school game with the big fights. Like you know, Cardoza. And those remember, yeah. there was a big fight in Madison Square. I, I know I'm, I'm going on, but there was a nah, big fight. but yeah. That, that at the end of the season, that, the, season, the public yeah. school and the Catholic school would play at the Garden for the championship. Yeah. Got it. All right, top, I'm on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. So right. Cardoza is public school. Got it. That's high, but like Rice, like I said, Holy Cross, Rice, Christ the King. Those schools are on the same circuit. So, yeah. at that time, in, in your opinion, what was the top school? Was Cardoza the top school? The, what, public school. Public school. Public wow. school. Cardoza, Cardoza was Cardoza one of the on top, top schools. I, it was boys and girls? Boys and girls had a decent team in my time. They had they had a decent team. But who was the top two schools? Me, in your I would have to say public school. I'm going with I'm going with Paul Robeson because they had my brother Gary Irvin. Mm. They had God bless his soul, my bro. They had they, they they had a lot of people. They was tough. Then the, after them, I got to go with Lincoln. Lincoln I heard yeah. about Lincoln. Yeah, that's, that's what Sebastian I got, um, yeah, they, I, I heard about go, Lincoln. I, go I Lincoln. Lincoln. heard Lincoln was fire. Yeah, no, nah, so Lincoln was tough. Tiny hat, tiny hat, Lincoln. Right. Like, they won back-to-backs and, yeah. So, them the two top schools I would have to go to in public school in my era. So when the when the, when does Dozo come in? What, you know, I mean, they you know, like they they probably would be three of me. You know, what I mean, it'd be Robeson, Lincoln, and Cardoza. Got you. Okay. Okay. And, and, and at the time, was the coach was his name uh, Ron DeClario. Ron DeClario. Yeah. 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 He ain't, he been there. He been there 
90 years. <laughs> he ain't going nowhere. Yeah, he was just talking about Mr. Nicolero. Yeah, he's a great dude. He ain't why going is he nowhere. so, in your opinion, why do you think he's so, like, pivotal in, in the basketball I just um, think he's genuine, man. Like, mm. he, he's a genuine dude. He want the best for the kids. You know mm. what I mean? And it's hard to find people like that now. Um, he, he never he never wanted to, oh, this is my kid. He's going to the NBA. He's going to make something. He's going to come. He never built, He never was that. You know what I mean? And I applaud him and salute him for that because he's just a genuine dude. He loves what he does. He he knows that the streets can control these kids, and he tried right. the best to keep them off the streets. You know what I mean? He he just his first game, their first scrimmage, he rode the train with them kids instead of taking them on the, uh, in his car. Wow. You know what I mean? So, like, I applaud him. I salute him for that. You know what I mean? Final because he's done this for 30 years. Final applause for Mr. Nicolario, man. Right. That's on phone. Nah, for That's sure. Solid. For sure. That's solid. I was telling Flip, I was telling Flip before before the show too. Like he's he's one of the coaches in the town. Like when you see him coming to the game, like you you try to like show out a little bit extra. Like nah, for sure watch, because gotta, he he, he has on. a name. He's a rep, and a lot of people expect uh, respects his word. Like if he if he says a kid got it, a lot of people going to take that and run with it. You know what I mean? God bless his soul. Tom Konchowski the same way. Like if Tom Konchowski said, "Yo, this kid's going to Duke. That kid's going to Duke." You know what I mean? He was the number one scout in high school history. You know what I'm saying? That's so he, he has that he has that stamp from me anyway. You know what I mean, Mr. Nicolario. Shout out to Mr. Nicolario. So so you 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 in the you you with the Panthers, it's looking good. And and the next step is what? Like So I'm playing with the playing, Panthers, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And I ended up getting uh a scholarship to go to the Catholic school league, you know what I mean? I went to LaSalle. Um, I ended up at LaSalle, and grades was bad. Mm. They they sat me, you know what I mean? Beginning of the season, they sat me till I got my grades right. But once I got my grades right, it was on. It was all. It was only up from there. How did you get your grades right? Or or because you know we we do be hearing the stories that the school be helping people get their grades. Right? No, nah, for sure they do. For sure they do. But at the same time, you still got to put the work in too. You know what I mean? They're going to help you as much as they can help you. You know what I mean? I, I had I had to be in class. I had to do some work. I ain't had to do it all, but I had to do some. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I, I, I got it to where I was able to play. You just didn't want to do work. What, like what, what was it for you about work, school work, real quick? Like what? It was... Once I started playing basketball and got that ego and all of that, man, that shit just took control of me, to be honest. You know what I mean? And it's, I and it's, it's, it's easy to do when you coming from not being noti- noticed or whatever. You know what I mean? And that's anything. That shit happened for me overnight. And I just, that ego just was like, I was like, all right, now, shit, I ain't doing no works. They'll do it for me. You know what I mean, <laughs> and it was and that's how I went. I think I heard on on a, on a docu- documentary or a different video somewhere. I'm not sure if it's true or not, but they say you had a a learning disorder in school. Was that true or was that a rumor? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I, I ain't never got tested for it, so I don't know. I don't know where they got that from. <laughs> I saw it online somewhere. I don't know. I, 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 I want to assume. You know what I'm saying? Do, do you? Do you? A lot of us in school at the time, man, I mean, and you said it right, you you know, the ego come in, a lot of things come in and they push you to be the best that you can be, right? And it's it's bad to say, but education or schoolwork becomes secondary. For sure. Or third, you know, and a lot of the coaches and a lot of the teachers that believe into the program, and it's going to sound crazy, but they go out their way to help the students accomplish their goals. Do you think that does, in your opinion, do you think that does more harm to a student or is actually helpful? I mean... How would you be honest? Like, Honestly, it can do a little both. You know what I mean? Respect. Because it did to me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It helped me and it hurt me. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah, you getting the work done for me and I'm passing to play now. But when basketball season is over, now you're looking at me like I got to do the work because basketball is over. You get what I'm saying? So you only help me for me to play basketball. 
Basketball is over now. Now they like, oh, you failing. Damn, bro, you just helped me two months ago. Mm. Now I got to go to tutoring. I got to do this. I got to do the extra. You get what I'm saying? So it can it can help you and it can hurt you. When, uh, so then you got to the program. They sat you down. And they, got, uh, they sat you down. And let's – so, <clears throat> hold on, they're giving – Scholar, Catholic school giving scholarships to go there because you got oh you got to pay yeah you got to pay yeah you got to yeah, pay, pay. Yeah. I'm, I'm catching up y'all don't, don't <laughs> concern, right? I'm with y'all I'm with y'all I just got to pay we done did many episodes with wrestlers and everything I didn't know what's going on <laughs> I, I, mean, I was lost so it's, it's all right you, you get you got one it's okay <laughs> <laughs> well I'm I'm on, I'm I'm on it I'm doing good you good you good you catching up don't you laugh at my friend like that man he good he doing good he doing good I got you G come on what's wrong with you laughing at my man oh so so. Got a scholarship yeah. to play there. And at this time, yeah. at home, when you're telling mom and pops, what is going through their mind at this time? At this time, when you got the My scholarship. My mom and dad don't know nothing about nothing. You hear me? <laughs> like, I'm talking about absolutely nothing about a high school basketball. All she know is that I just want to play basketball. That's it. She don't have no concern. She don't have my – my mom and my dad, I, as many as games I've ever played – in my life, my parents only seen me play probably twice. Oh wow! They ain't, they ain't into that. Like they they don't care about that. Did they that never bother? cared about it. You know what I mean? They just wanted me to be great at whatever I was gonna do. Did it bother you that they? Don't no, know, hell you know, no, because I was gonna perform and show out when I got on that court, regardless whether they was there or not. Because I'm if they wasn't there, I'm gonna go home and talk about it anyway. Hmm. You get what I'm saying? So, nah, ain't that, that never bothered me because somebody was watching me. Why did they come to the games, though? Did they, they tell you why they, they was working? They, work. they had you. to work. You know what I mean? Got you. They got had you. to provide okay. for us. So, so now, you, now they sit you down, you go to tutoring, you get your grades up because you know you try to bypass that. I got my grades. That's why they ask you. What? You, you, you're a smooth talker. You might not. You might act like you're not a smooth talker, but y'all. Nah, I, don't know I watched you on the bus with that girl when she was sitting on your lap. How she uh, was looking at you? Yeah, that was plenty of nights. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. We can tell. We can tell. <laughs> <laughs> we can tell. So, 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 I, I, and we like to go step by step. So, what happened then after you got your grades up? What happened? I remember, I'm not really. You have to all take right, so your that time was, with me, that basketball. Was, that, was, that was me getting right to LaSalle, all right? So I played LaSalle sophomore, junior year. You know what I mean? That's my Going into my junior year is when I became ranked the number one player in New York City. It went from being ranked the number one player in New York City to number one player in the country. You get what I'm saying? Like I said, all this shit just transformed so fast. And... Bill Abra was just, yep, just go. The, the ball is in your court. He rolled the ball out to me. He gave me the opportunity. We Like I said, we played against Rice. At the time, Rice had Andre Barrett, Kyle Cuff, Andre Sweet. They had a stacked team. We played St. Ray's. St. Ray's had Allen Ray, Julius Hodge, all of these guys that was already ranked. You get what I'm saying? These guys is already ranked. And I just had to prove my point. You know what I mean? My team was good. We was decent. You know what I mean? We had the Rodney Epperson's, the uh, famous Brown. We had, we had, we was all right, but we just couldn't beat that team, them teams. You know what I mean? And they was in our conference. Why but as long them? as I showed out, that's when Tom Kachowski started writing them scouting reports. You get what I'm saying? And once they started writing them scouting reports, it was different. Why do you think you can't beat them? What, what 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 was missing from you guys that you couldn't beat? Not it was that you me, probably, it. because I was all for self. <laughs> I ain't even going to lie. They know it. Respect. They know it. I got to get mine. So you were selfish? Yeah. It's going nuts every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get my 40, win or lose. I got to have mine. For sure. And that's what put me in them rankings. So it helped, but it also... They hurt me. I, hurt I, not that. Hell no. What about the team though? The team felt we, the way. We, we won the city championship and all that. But they, did they feel a way about you? No, no, they still love me. We still talk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, mean? I love my bros. <laughs> I got you. But you, you wasn't like it was. I'm going for my forty. No, I got. I mean, they know. They they know. They knew both. They knew. They, they, they knew. Bill Abel told me to go get mine. 
Gotcha. Mm. Gotcha. Yo, so how did you, you know, um, how did you prepare or, or practice during that time? Like, did, that, was you one of the guys that ran the stairs all the time and, you know, no, and jump no. crazy? Or you no, just kind of no, had, no, like, no, a nat- no. natural? All that shit is just, that's new age. I ain't never do none of that. But you and that's what hurt me. You know what I mean? I never put that work in. Mm. You know what I mean? I never, I would, man, I was going to LaSalle, going, I was at LaSalle, but go to Bishop Lachlan and practice with them. Like, I never was that. I never was that. I didn't put the work in at all. You know what I mean? Just that's natural. why that's why Melo and all of those guys is where they at because they put the work in every day. And I didn't do that. Why? I was just I I just didn't. I was that it goes back to that ego. You know what I mean? I already thought I was the sh- I mean, you was ranked though, so I mean it's, it's, it kind of, you know, I, I understand it a little bit. Yeah, but look at the circumstances now. You know what I mean? Like that's that's like I tell kids now, when you ain't working, somebody else is. Mm. I saw that where even in the documentary, and we're gonna get to that in a little bit, but I did see that you were a bit comfortable a lot of the times, and they were complaining about your comfortability. As and far as what? Like practice or coming to here or coming there like you were just you was then he cooked so you felt like I ain't I just felt like I was the shit. like well I ain't feel like it. I knew I was and nobody could do nothing with me that was that was a fact you talking you talking heavy and now I'm talking real mm. You too. Why you laughing? Why you, why you hyping him? Oh, man. <laughs> don't hype that, G. Nah, don't get a headache. Don't get a headache. G, don't get a headache. Don't get a headache. I know you took it good. I know right, it sounded right. good. <laughs> it sounded good. It sounded, so, so, but, but, now, there you the ball, you going, you become, so you're number one in New York City. Mm-hmm. And, and how do you, how do you do? How do you become number one? Is the people writing? Like I said, it's the it's the it's the reporters. The reporters. That's what I'm saying. And Tom Kanchowski, like I said, God bless his soul. You know what I mean, he he was that dude. Like he was the number one high school scout. So once they get the writing them reports and all of that, and the people started ranking, that's how that's how you become ranked. And what made you go to number one? They just making all them points. I just was killing. I was killing. In New York City. They cheated for you? Excuse me? Did they cheat for you? Cheat for me. <laughs> You're like, what? I don't want to see if your passion was there. You didn't shake. You said, but you put the work in. Nah, yeah. I, All right, so now, you're how old at this time when, you, when you're when ranked number one? 16, one, 16 turning 17. Okay. So, what's... When you're ranked number one, now this is number one in the city or number one in the nation at 16, 17? Going in, I'm, I'm going to my junior year as the number one player in the country. Wow. When Where, where did, like, you meet Bino and them at? Like, what, you know, because I know you play. I'm at there. Bino summer of my sophomore year. Summer mm-hmm. of my sophomore year, I'm at Bino. <laughs> shout out to Bino. I, uh, shout out to bro, mm-hmm. man. Love him to death. Um. Yeah, so instead of me playing with all these other AAU programs, I was the first kid. You know how Soldier Boy be like, I'm the first rapper to do, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I was the first kid to have his own AAU team. Mm. You know what I mean? So when I moved with Debbie, I didn't want to play with nobody else. So she allowed me to create my own AAU program. So we had the Wolf Pack. And Bino was one of the players that played with me with the Wolfpack. So, yeah, we got, we got but how'd you get like? Wh- yeah, yeah. How'd was, you get Bino? Like, how'd you pick like? You, you- Bino, Bino <laughs> was in Queens playing, and I seen him, and he knew somebody that I knew, and I wanted Bino part of the team, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm with it," and we just started rocking was, from you, there. You said Bino was strong, right? When he nah, played. Bino, Bino had game. He was just strong. He was dominant. You know what I mean? He was. Intimidating people were scared of him, so yeah, I needed him on that team. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so how? I don't know because we kind of skipped it. We kind of jumped over because that child, the Bino. How did the whole situation with Miss Debbie happen? So, I was at LaSalle still. 
That's how, okay. Getting your grades up. Going to, yeah, going into my junior year. Now, were you out? Now, I'm, I, I didn't ask you this because I did watch later on you be outside chilling. At this time, were you outside in Brooklyn as a teenager? For sure. T- you turned to get in trouble? Never, never getting in trouble. But just, you was outside turning up? Just outside, yeah, just turning up. Hitting everything raw? Huh? Hitting everything raw at the time? Yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. Chill, let him know that. Let him know, do it. 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 Hey, yo, you was outside here out. like that? Nah, man. Uh, but yeah. In Brooklyn, 16, 17? Yeah. I know that. Nah. On your body, too, out there. You was that man. Huh? Nah, no, I know. I heard about you. What you didn't hear about me, man. You what? Play, you playing ball. Hey, are you nice? They on your body, man. Uh, nah, at the I had, games. I had some days, at man. At the practices, probably. I saw way out the practices. Hey, what's up, man? So, so, so. so Yes. But nah, yeah. Uh, so going into my junior year, mm-hmm. uh, my mom and them was ready to leave to go back to Virginia. So I didn't want to leave to go down there. It was no basketball op- opportunity down there for me. So Debbie was like, "You can, I'll, I'll be his guardian, and he can come live with me." You know what I mean? So that's how that went about. How did you meet Miss Debbie? Like, where she was you part of the Panthers. Her son played for the Panthers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Her son played for the Panthers. They might not give me Daniel or something like that. Huh? What was, what was her son's name? Brian. Ryan, right? Brian, Brian. Brian. Yeah. Okay. So her son played for the Panthers, and and you saw this lady there, and you just nah. She just like she just always been with the Panthers because I don't know if y'all know, well. I don't know if Bino told you about Justice. Like she had Justice before me. You know what I mean? Justice was a kid that was from Queens that was like that played at uh, I think just went to Patterson Catholic. You know what I mean? She took Justin and she helped him out. You know what I mean? Because she saw the potential in him and he was going down the wrong road. You know what I mean? Mm. So it it was similar stories. You know what I mean? Shout out to my bro Just too. So yeah, yeah, Bino, Bino, yeah. Shoot that picture, right? Yeah, you I see the picture on them. Yeah, it's a picture, of y'all. Yeah. <laughs> you know everybody in this picture? Yeah, everybody. That's my that's my team. What tournament is that? Is that that's not we, how you say yeah, is we it. We was at West Fourth. West Fourth. Yeah. So 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 so, so Bino was telling me like you know you was with Scott the Animal and have. Mm-hmm. When you took a sit down with Desert Storm and IHOP Queens, mm-hmm. that was around what time? That's when y'all created the team. Yeah. Okay, but before that, so Debbie, so Debbie, she saw you didn't want to go back. You, your mom was going back. She was moving back to Virginia. Yeah, they was mo- they was moving to Virginia. To Virginia, you know what okay. I mean? And I, I didn't want to go down there because I felt like it was no opportunities there for me. Well, I knew it was no opportunity there for me. You know what I mean? So my mom and my dad talked it out, and they allowed me to go live with Debbie. You know what I mean? And continue to play basketball in high school. But you said Pops didn't want you to do it. My dad was against it, but my mom convinced him to be like, yeah, let him stay. You know what I mean? My dad was totally against it. Tell us what he said. He was just like, hell no. He not, he coming to Virginia. You know what I mean? He didn't want it at all. No bullshit. But my mom put her foot down. It was like, if it's better for him, why are we going to take him down here where there's no opportunity for him? Was it easy for her to accept you because she did it before? You said she, so it was easy that like you just went and asked her, or she just came to you. I asked her. I, I I had to go to her and ask her. You know what I mean? If it's okay, you know what I mean. And she was like, "Yeah." She was like, "As long as you're willing to do what's right, what I say, and blah blah blah." Of course, I said, "Of course, I'm going to do what's right, what you say, agree with your rules, and all that." And her and my mom was like, "Okay." What was it? What's her background? I know she's. But what's her back? What is she? Italian? Mm-hmm. Jew, like what is her background? Do you know? She's Italian. She's Italian. White woman. Like I mean, not all white people are Italians, man. I mean, what? <laughs> she one of them. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> but she was a nice. Nah, she, but nah. She, that's she, my mom. Like she, she, she genuinely really wanted the best for me, and I fucked it up. You know what I mean? Yeah, we don't um, get to that. Don't, don't rush it, cause you know, you, you know, you like to. I know you took it. Don't speed it. You know, I'm I'm trying to catch up with you. Come on now. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
No, so so she allowed you, moms and them left, yeah. you were there. How was it living in her home? I was like the Fresh Prince of Old Japan. <laughs> <laughs> I was the Fresh Prince of Old Japan. No bullshit. It was every kid's dream, bro. I was living the lavish life at a young age, having it my way. Mm-hmm. And that part of my ego with being the number one player in the country, I'm rich, I'm flying private, I'm shit was different. Cause I did hear in a documentary, when I watched a documentary that they said that the guy asked, where did she get the money from? So her family was wealthy? Nah, her, her, and, her, her and her husband, they just, they had bread. They, they, they got it, they got it. I see you gonna leave it at they got it. Yeah, they got it. Hmm. See, <laughs> I'm gonna respect that. When you say stuff like that, you leave in your windows for me to to, to speculate. They got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. They, they just got it. Yeah. They got it. They got it. They got it. Got and it. they still got it. They still got 20 it. Twenty years later. Yeah. They got it. They 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 are. Right. Sh- I, I think we should probably move in with her then. Yeah, yeah. They got it. yeah. Shout out to Debbie and Ken. She got to pay for two podcasters to come over there, and, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> she still got it. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, room over there, man. So living with Debbie. Now bring us to the process. So I get there. You know what I mean? I, like I said, I transfer. Get to Old Japan, Old Japan High School. You know what I mean? It was like being in Beverly Hills, nine zero two one zero. You know what I mean? I'm the only African American male. Everybody else is just, I never went to the school where they sitting in front of the lockers doing their homework and like, it was different. You know what I mean? It was different. Where's the school at? In in Jersey, in Old Japan, New Jersey. Okay. You know what I mean? And basketball was never it. Always been a top 100 school in the country in academics though. You know what I mean? Um, but basketball was never on the map for it. You get what I'm saying? And I got there and shit just went nuts. ESPN was all over it. Um, first game sold out 10 days before I played a game. You know what I mean? And everybody who was somebody was at that game. You know what I mean? And it was, it was just different, man. It was a different atmosphere, different chemistry. Like, it was just different. But what I appreciated the most now is how that town and them people welcomed me. You know what I mean? And I never got the chance to really thank them because they showed me so much love when I was there. All the students loved me. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, One of my favorite guys was this guy, James Pugliotti. He was like one of my biggest fans ever. You know what I mean? He was a teammate of mine. Um, But... Shout out to Old Japan, man, because they showed me a lot of love. Wow. That was that was your um, junior year. Junior right? year. So you tra- you transferred from the South yep. to junior year there. Junior year going to yeah, junior year. My senior year I didn't play at all. I thought you played didn't you play like the first few, a couple games and then no. Five games, seven games, something eight, like that. Eight, eight, brother. Oh, oh, you did your research. I did. Okay, eight, okay, eight, okay. Eight, you know eight, a little bit. Don't Stop freestyle. acting like you don't know nothing, then. I don't know, brother. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I don't nah, know. Nah. Brother. Yeah, you did eight. You played eight games, but yeah. there was a you know a regulation. Yeah, eligibility. Yeah, in in Jersey. Yeah. So you had that town lit because you had ESPN. Different people coming out there to see you. Yeah. And is it your junior year there? Um, and then senior year. Se- senior year, I played eight. What eight, eight games? games you yeah, said. and then you turned what nineteen? Yeah. Okay. So, but how, I'm, what I'm trying to be. So what, what's confusing a little bit is that you were sixteen, ranked number one, going on seventeen, 17 ranked to the country. Yeah, yeah like, so, and then. You were in your junior year, though, at yeah. that time. Going then, into my junior year. Going into your junior year. Did you start school late then? Yeah. So why you say I got that, left man? Back. I, I started school and got left back. 
But when you got left back in New York when, City? When I reclassed to go to private school, to go to LaSalle from Franklin K. Lane. They what, they left you me. back? Uh-huh. They reclassed me. They call it reclassing now. Ninth grade, right? Yeah. Ninth grade. It's called reclassing. Ain't no kids left behind no more. <laughs> <laughs> what? Do you think yeah. that messed you up a little bit? Hell no. That didn't, you, you don't blame nah, that at all? Nah, okay. because, I, I, because I never would have got that, I, that extra year to play. You get what I'm saying? They wouldn't have never let me play at LaSalle if I'd have went in as a sophomore. Mm. Mm. So you go there, you're playing, and in the summer, like what? You know, Which but, summer? But, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Let me just say this real quick. You know, when I'm when I'm watching this and 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 reading and looking at it. You know, it it becomes, um, like I said earlier, because off camera we was talking. You know, yeah. it becomes a little sad story because yeah, for sure, it's like man, you you were you were there. So, you know, I'm just the reason why I'm letting you tell the steps. You know, we are because we just want to listen to the process of how things came together. You know, we want you to talk about it because we even know watching this you know when you said that you said a lot of the stuff in the documentary was cut out you wasn't there for the editing yeah and stuff like that you had said that so you know um we did see you um being filmed mm-hmm. at at, at miss debbie's house mm-hmm. right um how did that whole thing come together how did the documentary start so the story wasn't supposed to be a story that it was. You get what I'm saying? The story was supposed to be, I'm gonna follow this kid, he's gonna be a draft pick out of high school, blah, 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 blah. I mean, that shit didn't happen. So years later, they reach back out and try to make it into this cautionary tale. You get what I'm saying? So I, I, at first I was like, hell no. And then he kept calling, kept calling, kept reaching out. And I'm like, all right, you know what? If it can help somebody else, bro, let's do it. You know what I mean? If you saying that this story gonna help somebody else, I'm with it because I ain't even, at the time, once all of my negativity and all of that shit started, I ain't even want no parts of basketball. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, let's do it. And he came to Alang City, sat down with me, and he was like, this is gonna be the outline, this is what we gonna do, blah, 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 blah. Told me all of the all the extra shit that I needed to know that I wanted to hear rather, and I was like, "Let's do it." No, but when I'm, so how did they approach you? And so who came up to you in the beginning stages when you were younger? Who, how was it presented to you? How did that? That's, that's what that's what it was. The dude, Adam but you Shotcorn. wasn't in Atlantic, you wasn't in Atlantic City at the time. You was no, in, I was still with Debbie at the time. Yeah, when it first that, when it started happening, when it was supposed to have been that. Fairy tale story. Okay, so who who what's the guy the name? The dude again? Adam Shopcorn. Adam Shopcorn. Yeah. What does he do? Who is he? He was the he he's the one that made the movie. Okay. He had the Safety Brothers film it. So so Adam Shopcorn came one day and said he wants to follow a kid because you're going he, to be a draft the pick. The next high school draft pick okay. out of high school, and we're going to follow him for, I guess, like the first three years because the first contract is three years. Adam, Shit didn't happen that way. Was you he nice? I, was he cool? Like, what, what type of guy was he? I mean, he mostly spoke with Debbie, not me. You know what I mean? She was oh. the guardian. So he set it up with Debbie. Yeah. So they, whatever it was, you know what I mean? We agreed to it, and... That was that, you know what I mean? But me and me not getting drafted, the story didn't turn out that way. I got you that get part. what I'm saying? I got that part. I got that part. You still was like, but even watching the footage, you still was a little, like, like I said earlier, you wasn't, um, you know, you were late sometimes. Um, in the footage, there was a guy that said that, um, I think it was the Adidas tournament, right, that you were in? What, what what was it? What were you in? At ABC the camp. Yeah, ABC camp, right? Mm-hmm. And you know they they were complaining about your tardiness. Mhm. What about it? What you mean? What about it? What you I was late do? tonight, right? <laughs> I'm always late, bro. 
but I'm always on time. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> 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 oh, man. I was never late for a game, ever. But practice you didn't care about? I didn't. The camps you didn't care about? I didn't. ABCD camp is a pretty big deal. It was. It was. I, I, I made I made my my I made my stamp. You so did. I didn't care about it anymore. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Once they ranked me after that, once I got MVP there, like it didn't matter to me at that time. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So, but and mm-hmm. and that goes back to what I was saying earlier. Like that's a lesson that hurt me by not caring. But that also come from not having that right guidance, that right push. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That yep. the kids had, like the LeBrons, the Mellows, the Raymond Feltons. But you had Debbie though. She, she didn't. She didn't she, help you. Debbie wasn't nobody that can push me or drive me to do anything, bro. She just wanted me to just play basketball and be the best that I could be. She wasn't nobody that can discipline me. Mm. So you think you were missing discipline? I, I definitely was lacking discipline. What do you think could have helped you at that time? What type of person could have helped you? I don't know. At that time, I can't. I, that I can't answer because I don't know. You think the I just didn't had- have like maybe it could have been a coach. You get what I'm saying? Maybe it should have been one of my coaches that was on my ass mm. because my dad was gone. You get what I'm saying? They moved back, but it, it's somebody. That's not an excuse, but I'm just saying, like, at the end of the day, I didn't have that discipline. Everything I did, I did because I wanted to do. I, I didn't have nobody telling me, yeah, no. Mm-hmm. So what about Ken, Debbie's husband? He didn't say nothing? We, nothing. He, he knew not to say nothing. Why not? For what? Like, he wasn't my guardian? He can't say nothing. Zero. I want to stick on this subject for a little bit. Come on, let's talk about it. Yeah, because, you know, you know. Sonny Vaccaro is the guy that started the ABC camp, right? Yeah. The guy. Sonny, yeah. Yeah. And he stated that you can be successful. There's a quote that he said, you could be um, successful or... You could just be an NBA street legend. You said that in your documentary. Mm -hmm. Now, you think that they saw you being this person due to the fact of you not being disciplined? They saw you being not taking it serious? I believe that now. You know what I mean? But also, I just feel like my image, my image was bad. You know what I mean? So... At the time, I didn't know those like those people paid full detail to that. I didn't know that people was watching me per se every single day, every move I made. You get what I'm saying? Like your yeah, image is everything, bro. And these kids need to know that. Like yo, you can be outside your social media page. Social media is free publicity for you to fail or be successful. You know what I mean? And at that time, I didn't. I, I wasn't aware of that because nobody said, yo, look, cook, you need to be in the gym 24-7. Even in school, it should be school, practice, workouts, home, school, practice, workout, home. Before we took a little break, um, Mr. Mark, Debbie. you feel like Debbie, yeah, you feel like Debbie. So let's keep it real. I mean, we don't want to disrespect anybody. Do you feel like the fact that the lack of discipline and – the lack of, because you needed more of a parent. You needed more of somebody that was on you. You feel like the fact that they were more catering instead of more, I don't want to say involved because I don't want to use the wrong word. I don't know how involved she was. No, she was definitely involved, bro. Yeah. She was definitely involved. She, Like I said, she was on me about my grades and shit like that. Mm-hmm. But it was me. Pull up you my know what I mean? it was It was more so me, you know what I'm saying? Because I was the kid that was like, you ain't my mom. You know what I mean? Like, you can't tell me what to do. I'm going to do what I want. Like, she would try to discipline me. Don't get it wrong. You know what I mean? But it was it was more so me. You know what I mean? And and that was just me being a 
bro. You know what I mean? It was me. I don't blame nobody but myself, bro. So do you think if if your let's say your parents had stayed in Brooklyn, or you know, or stayed just stayed in you know, then they, they, they moved to Virginia, do you think you would have that same attitude with the ego because you 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 rank number one in the in the in the, in, in the state and no one in the country? I mean, you know, do you you have the same? I think I still would have been ranked number one in the country and all of that, but. Well, I mean, it's, when they come to basketball, I, mean, I still I mean, probably as... wouldn't have went to practice and all that because my parents wasn't involved with that. Right, right. But all that extra shit that I was doing wouldn't have happened because my dad didn't play that. Gotcha. You know what I mean? My dad, my dad would fuck me up. Like my dad didn't play that, like that disrespect and all of that. He didn't play. What's the extra stuff that you were doing? I mean, just being out. Like, I was going to clubs, bro, 16, 17. Like, my dad wasn't having that me going coming in the house when I wanted to. Like, that shit didn't happen. That shit don't happen in our household as a kid. You get what I'm saying? So those things, that discipline was gone. So I took advantage of it. And you told Miss Debbie, and, and so you, did you really get along with her husband? No, nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you just yeah. told you just told them that they can't tell you. I mean, what to do. I, I I would say that at times when I'm mad, like yeah, you can't tell me what to do. You're not my parents. Like I would say, you know what I mean, and not knowing that it was being disrespectful or maybe even hurtful. You get what I'm saying? But looking back now, I know it was messed up on my behalf. You get what I'm saying? Going to clubs at a young age, hanging out doing things, you know, these stories, and this is to the, how important father figures or parents are in your life to to instill discipline. Cause you just admitted like you'll flip, like if my dad was there and if he was involved, it would never have been this. Never, never. My dad wouldn't, ha my dad wouldn't have that bro. And that's, I, I mean, that's a fact. Like I ain't got a sugar coat, nothing. My dad didn't play that shit. You would have been in practice and all that. Pops I don't know there. about the practice part. Like I said, I don't know. About, I probably, because my, my parents wasn't, they didn't care about the basketball part. But if you get what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. my grades would have been better. You get what I'm saying? Shit like that. Me cutting school and all of that, that shit didn't happen. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like none of that happened. How does Pops feel, though, like kind of knowing, you know, that he, he could have, well, you know, like, you know, Things happened, they had to move, you had to, you know, yeah. well, the kisses, but do you know how he feels about the situation and, and him thinking about maybe I, if, I, if I would have been there, if I would have stayed, you know, I, I could have helped my son, you know, does he feel any we like- We talk about shit all the time, bro. Like I said, we was just together last night, bro. Right, right. Like, just chopping it up with my mom, my dad, you know what I mean? And he, they don't they don't care about the basketball part, bro. They just want, they just, I'm the only one that's back and forth here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Everybody else is still down there. And they just worry about my well-being being the only one out here. You, they don't they don't care about none of that basketball shit. Even even still they, they just still focus to this on day. your well-being, that's it. Like basketball that's it. is they don't they, they worry about they it. never cared about it, bro. Wow. Never. Okay. So now these things so now you playing and um just basically doing what you want. That's what the documentary showed. Basically, bro. Um, and they they did paint it because everybody always say that you know, man, this is a sad story. And you know, I, I took the guy named down, a guy named Stu Lash. I don't know who he was, but Stu was like, you know, he was talking the documentary that you know I saw. It was four thirty in the club, and I saw you know I saw Lenny right. coming in the club four thirty with some of him and his homies in New York, mm. and that was the image that you basically. Painted to people for you know, sure. doing these things. I did, and even I said earlier that 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 Sonny Vaccaro, you know, he was saying, you know, and he said he was the founder of the ABCD camp, you know, um, he was saying that like you are the person who can change it. You for sure. You can either be somebody great in the NBA, or you can change it or be an NBA street legend. I'm not NBA, a uh, New York City street legend, mm -hmm. and those those stuck with me. Um, what did that do to your mind? Um, before we get back to the story, but what does that do to your mind now? 
like thinking about that, thinking about these words coming to fruition? A lot of the things that I hear or read or whatever, social media, whatever, bro, a lot of shit I take heed to what people say, especially if it's positive. The negative shit I don't care about, bro. Like the LeBron shit I don't care about. That's 22, 21 years ago. But looking back on somebody that was really paying attention to me and saying – if he would have did it this way, or if he could have did it this way, I take heed to shit like that. You get you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I take heed to God bless his soul when Kobe said, I can beat you in various ways. I didn't know what that meant at that time. He was talking about mentally, not physically on the court. Like, you know what I mean? So certain things I take consideration of now because now at 40 I can look back and, and now I can sit back and tell these stories to the next generation. Like, yo, little nigga, like, use me as an example of what not to do. That's all. Just use me as an example. I was there. I know what it take. And if I were to put that extra work in, I'd be 21 years in now. So if you... Use me as an example. You don't got to listen to me, but just use me as an example and watch how far it take you. As a basketball player, as a football player, or whatever you want to be, it ain't got to be just a man in life. If this is what you want, my story would take you further than a lot of things and anything that you want to do. Anything. It ain't got to be sports at all. It don't got to be sports. Do you blame the people around you? I don't well? blame nobody but Leonard Cook. None of your friends? And I don't blame that. nobody. Nobody. Like I said earlier, every decision I made, I made it. I don't blame nobody. Respect. Everybody tried to put it on somebody. Oh, this person. This. Man, I made my decisions. Some of them probably told me, no, don't do it. Know what I mean? But I made my own decisions. By listening to you talk, I realize, not realize, but it's like the old saying, man, you know, discipline is needed for a lot of things. For you know? sure. Father figures and certain figures of of, of um, somebody to be on your back is, is needed. It is. You know? Especially nowadays, man, as much as, and I don't even like talking about shit like that, but like as much as they talk about this mental health and all of that shit now, it's needed, bro. It's needed. It's needed. And it ain't just athletes. It's just people in general. You know what I mean? I'm one of them. I'm still, I, I, it's needed. And we find other outlets. You get what I'm saying? How bad you beat yourself up about it, Lenny? N- none no more. How did you do it before? It took me 20 years, bro. It took me 20 years. Hate is a strong word. I hated LeBron James, bro. It took me 15 years. Till my daughter looked at me one day and she saw that cooler with the Sprite, the Sprite cooler where you can go in there and get the, the, the soda out. And she said, Dad, you was better than LeBron James. That's LeBron James right there. That took a lot of pain and stress off of me, bro. I played with, I played with a Hall of Famer. I was considered better than a Hall of Famer. I did it to myself. Nobody else did that. You get what I'm saying? So I don't that that wore heavy on me for a long time, bro. Now, when, do you think that the now it was a personal being angry at LeBron? Do you think that it was the tabloids and stuff that you? Were it was. Doing? It was just the media. You know what I mean? Sonny Vaccaro had something to do with it. Gary Charles had something to do with it. I never know the answer. I never know the answer why Boston didn't play me against the Cavs in Summer League. I never know that answer, but I played every other game, but you didn't play me against the Cavs? I would never know the answer to that. You get what I'm saying? Do you think that, now who choice was it not to play you? I don't know. I don't, I would never have an answer to that. I don't know. Who was the coach at the time? It was one of the assistants. The head coach, the, the head coach don't coach in the Summer League. So the assistant's coach. I played every game of Summer League except for the last game of Summer League against Cleveland. 
Why? I don't know. Now, you don't seem like a conspiracy theorist because you took accountability for a lot of your actions, which I respect you for. Do you feel like at the time that they were protecting LeBron? I'm not into that. I don't I don't know. That's a good question. But just know that at the end of the day, it wasn't about me and LeBron, bro. I know what I deserved at that time. I know I was a professional at that time. You know what I'm saying? I know I deserve to be in the NBA at that time. Whether y'all was protecting him or not, that didn't have me and him. I just needed to go out there and showcase myself in front of everybody else, them other teams that was there. I knew Boston wasn't keeping me. You get what I'm saying? But that would have been the game that gave me that light. It, it had nothing to do with me going out there and try to outdo him or whatever. He was already drafted. He was already solidified. I needed my spot. You get what I'm saying? I was just going to go out there and earn what was what I deserved. And they took that away from me. They took it away. They took it away from me. And you could say that they that's what, you know, by not playing you and allowing you to display your talent, the whole world was ready for that, bro. That game was like a payback game too, because before that you ain't played him since the since ABC since the ABCD camp. Yeah, with and that was a game that they you know uh, saying you know the, uh, allegedly that's when he kind of yeah he, he became stop, he became that he became the chosen one. He became it, and then they said it, that that stopped your career. Uh, that never stopped my career, bro. Apparently, that shit right they there. That. Whoever said that, they can keep, keep that. He never stopped my career. I played overseas for eight years, bro. Mm. He never stopped my career. You know what I mean? What stopped my career was a car accident. That's what stopped my career. Me being in a wheelchair for a year and a half. That stopped my career. LeBron James did not stop my career, and people fail to realize that. And I ain't never said it, never ever, to nobody. But they know. They know about the car accident when I was playing in the ABA. People know, you know what I'm saying? It won't know LeBron James stop, my, stop nothing. Bring us to that day when you played LeBron and Abe, because you know I heard you gave him a lot of credit, like you know, by Camelo, and you gave LeBron a lot of credit, like oh he's nice. He's they deserve it, bro. Do you feel like so? Bring us to that day playing. Do you feel like, and I'm gonna ask you this honestly, well, you feel like LeBron was more polished than you as far as a polished player? You had a very unique style of playing on orthodox. I'm not going to say that he was polished. He had game, but I also came to the game hungover. I came to the game tired. I came to the game not caring who LeBron was, underestimating him. You get what I'm saying? That's how I came to the into that game that day, that morning. You get what I'm saying? Like, I didn't care about who he was. I never heard of him until that day, ever. Now, I knew about Melo when I played Melo. I knew about Raymond Felton when I played them. You know what I'm saying? I mm -hmm. never knew who this kid was. And he showed me who he was. You were up and by one. And still is. <laughs> I respect that. Nah, you, for sure. You were up by one in that game, remember? I would never know the end of this story, bro. Because if my teammate would have hit them free throws, and LeBron still hit that winning shot, I still would have won by one. I would never know the ending to that story. My teammate was at the line with two free throws. He missed both. Mm. Missed both. They come down, they score. We don't score. He goes down 10 seconds and hit a running floater and wins the game by one. I would never know what happens. What if what if my teammate would have made both free throws and he still hit that shot? We win. How my how my shit would have turned out? We would never know. But you already but you still you still was coming in there like I hung didn't. over, hung over and yeah, I came to yeah, still, but you yeah. But you just that. you know, when you talk like that, right? And you still was playing good, so you just saying that at your worst, you was that dude. <laughs> so at your best, you be even. I ran out of gas. Yeah, the, the, the first, I ran out of gas. The, the first half, you was, you was killing I did my half. thing the first Se half. I ran half. out of gas. Okay. He turned it up a notch. 
He did. It was close. I kept my team in the game. We, my team was rocking. Just so happened that situation, he hit the shot and he hit with me and in front of him. You know what I'm saying? And he took off from there. He became the chosen one. Mm. Who was the guy that missed the free throws? <laughs> I, mean, I, I ain't that guy. I ain't that guy. Just know that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> um, things change. How, how, what did losing that game do to you? Caused me a ranking. Caused me a draft pick. Caused me millions of dollars. If I look back on it, because if I went in there prepared, it would have went different. It would different if I was prepared. But that's, that comes with not knowing, underestimating somebody. You know what I mean? Underestimating somebody. He came in there with a, with, with a goal and he accomplished it. Wow. It shows that, um, just, real, just real quick, when you, when you hear these stories and watch these things happening, um, and it's crazy to say, man, but a lot of us are ignorant to these things, to knowing, you know, how to follow our paths to be better for ourselves. When I watch your story and watch it and even hearing you play, and I respect the fact you took accountability, um, and I respect the fact that you were the only guy wearing Jordans in an Adidas tournament. Yeah. You know? Um, but if you was more disciplined, it would be different. I believe so. And not saying that I, like, let, let's, let's be clear, bro. Mm -hmm. Not saying that I would be better than LeBron right now. You get what I'm saying? Not saying I would be better than a lot of people that's in the NBA right now. But I think me, me and my decision making and not having that coach or father figure around or somebody to push me or whatever the case may be, it took a toll on me. It hurt me. Who do you think cared the most? Me. About you? Me. Nobody cared? Not saying that they didn't care. Not saying that they didn't care, bro. I just didn't. I just feel like it was as long as I was happy, they was happy. So and, you that, and that goes to my parents. You know what I mean? And Debbie. Not too many people I can say that I worry about whether they cared or not. You said that, you know, um, you don't know if it was Sonny, you don't know if it was this person, you don't know if it was that person. What did you mean by that line as far as, you know, you had said that earlier, a couple mm -hmm. of minutes ago. I don't know if it was Sonny, you said somebody else's name as far as why you didn't... Play in that game? Yeah. What about it? What? So Sonny is the... A, B, C, D, co-founder, correct? Mm -hmm, for sure. What he had to do with that game, that wasn't it. I mean, he's just an Adidas guy, man. He wanted LeBron. He tried to sign LeBron, and it didn't happen. So he was heavy on LeBron after that game. You get what I'm saying? He wanted him. After the game? At A, B, C, D. He, he thought LeBron was going to be Adidas guy. He ended up with Nike. Maybe he should have stuck with Cook. Cook would have still been with Adidas. So, how I'm seeing it, and you're not, I'm not that guy. You're not that guy. So, we're going to respect the fact that you're not that guy. So, let me just put my not that guy hat on. Let me put that guy hat on. How I see it is that for years, you might have blamed people before you came to a realization. And... This is just my opinion. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you how you thought. I'm just, I'm, no, for sure. I'm being that guy. For sure. So I would think that, why did he, I played every game for Boston. Every game. But y'all did not let me play against LeBron James knowing that I could get my revenge. Mm. I could get my get back. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm not gonna mess up like I did that time when I was in the club, young, drunk, turning up, have these young ladies on my laps asking me crazy questions, looking me in the eye, <laughs> uh -huh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Doing all that. Uh -huh. N-word stuff mm -hmm. at its finest. And I know that you had a chance, and for some reason, they didn't play you. Let's let's look into that a little bit. Let's talk they didn't about call it. you out or nothing. Let's talk about it. I need you to bring me there. I'm close my eye. Bring me. Bring me your vision. What do you see? You sit on the sit on the bench. Pause. Waiting. Nah, it wasn't <laughs> even that, bro. Let me tell you, the day before that game, bro. There you go. We in practice. Marcus Banks. That was our point guard from uh, UNLV, he like, yo, you play in this game, I'ma keep feeding you. That's what he telling me, I'ma keep feeding you, keep feeding you, no homo. So I'm like, yo, it ain't about that. This is what I'm thinking to myself. It ain't about that. My other guard, uh, my other guy was, was, I forgot his name. Never guard though. Like, yo, just go out there and play your game, bro. Just play your game. You've been playing well all summer league. Just go play. And just to sit there and never get on the floor, that shit crushed me. I ain't even I cried, bro. That shit crushed me. Braun come to me after the game. We up. I'm crying. I'm devastated, my You know what I mean? I'm devastated. Like this 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 had this could have changed me. You know what I mean? That that's why I feel the way I feel with it when I say what I said about Sonny and them. Sonny and who? Sonny and Gary and whoever else was part of Adidas at that time that wanted to sign LeBron. They knew that you could uh It it wasn't about that. It wasn't about that. Like you said, who knows if they was protecting him? Who knows? I don't know. I would never know. How did you do in the other games prior? I saw, I'm asking you. I see. I nah, saw. I saw. I'm nah, asking. You said you. I saw. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I saw, it's I saw, it's I there. It. It's there. I, saw, I, I, I did my it. thing. I read it. Yeah. It's I there. averaged 24 and something. 28. Yeah, 28. Yeah, summer league. I did my thing. But and, what? And you cried. You nah, was crushed. I, 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 I was hurt. I was hurt. I ain't, ain't no sugar coat. Every dude. game you played except for that one. That it meant the most to me. They could have sat me every game and just played me that game. Mm. You get what I'm saying? That shit meant the most to me, that game. Do you think at that time, honestly, that they might have been over you? Hell no, because they wouldn't have had me lined up for him. They wouldn't have had that matchup. They wouldn't have had me there. They wouldn't have had me there. What they was going to have me there for? They knew that we was playing against each other, and it was the last game of the summer league. Everybody was there. So it won't over. I just don't know. I would never have that answer, bro. I would never have that answer. So who can we interview to ask them? I don't know. I'm just saying, who can we interview? I don't know. I don't know. You, you got to call David Stern, and he ain't the commissioner no more. That's how far you got to go back. Mm. So we can't ask Sonny or none of them. Sonny's the Sonny, I don't, no, I don't got no rap for none of them. You feel a way towards them still? Nah. So nah there's no love rap. lost. There's no love lost. I just knew after that. ABC this summer, they wanted LeBron instead of Lenny. It's simple. They didn't end up signing me. He went to Nike. All of that, whatever it was y'all offered, and blah, 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 back and forth. It, it, did nothing, it, it didn't help you. As many guys you had. From Tracy McGrady to Tim Thomas to all of those, you get what I'm saying? All of those guys. You ain't never hired them from nobody? Why hire me? 
you can see that it, it could have been your lack of discipline. No, I get that. I get that. But that don't got shit to do with that fucking game. I played every other game. They might have felt you. They might have felt that you. You know, they might have been watching and felt you didn't deserve it. Do you feel that way? Like yo, they felt that I didn't deserve Nobody it. Nobody never said it to me like that, Flip. Nobody ever said it to me like that. That may be. That may be it. I may. I may have not deserved it at that time. And that's why I feel like. I was, not was, let me rephrase that. That's why I feel like I'm an example to help others. Because if you can't get it from me, who can you get it from firsthand? You get what I'm saying? And this don't just go to the athlete or whatever, that go to the parents too or the athlete. You better be there with your kid. You better stand on that. If this is, you better stand on that. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That play a part. Cause I did see, I, I did, we did see, we did see Sonny what he said about you, man. We saw him. Well, I still, I, I still don't. I mean, I think what you're saying make the most sense out of anything. But I still can't okay. see why they won't let him play that one game though. Like, if, if, but if, like if I said, I never it, heard, he I never, it. nobody ever, I never heard nobody say it to me like that though. Right. Like, yeah. like we know he can get out there and play. We know he can get out there and, and he's going to play well. But he don't deserve it right now. But when do I deserve it? Because after summer league is over, maybe don't nobody pick him up, which nobody did. Ended up going to a lot of workouts afterwards. But I wasn't going to get picked up when I'm going to workouts with guys that's already drafted. So you asked, you asked, you, never, you said that you wonder, say, that, say what you said again, G. No, I'm just trying to, like, I think what you said makes the most sense out of the situation. Like, maybe they feel like he didn't deserve it. But if if they felt that way, then they, they, they wouldn't let him play the other games. The like, other like, games, you know right? So I. I really wish we could talk to somebody that that was like you said, David yeah. Stern, somebody that kind of explained it to us and, and make it make sense. Because to me, it don't make no sense. Well, well, let me say what I mean by he didn't deserve it. Maybe no, no, no. It. I think what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. it makes the most sense. No, what no. you're saying. No, I'm gonna elaborate for clip. Oh, sure. for, for clip. Sure. Good clarity. Clarity. <laughs> clarity. <laughs> so, 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 in my opinion, mm. um, a lot of times when you know we we take uh, or there's different kids or people. From these different areas, or the sub, not, not suburban, the, the hood, right, right, and then they're given opportunities. A lot of them, you know, people really don't really care about you emotionally. A lot of people care about your talent and what you can do. Is always, what have you done for me lately, or what can you do for me now? Mm. Now, when you put somebody in a position and 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 give them an opportunity, this is my opinion, looking from perspective, and he was honest. This is what I like about him. He like yo, flip. I was going in there drunk. I was. Partying, you watched a guy named, you know, and I, I was even telling you, man, I think that was kind of like a little shade. The guy Stu Lash, he said, it would be nice if, if, if Lenny was here, right? And he of course it guy. would be shade. I yeah. mean, of course it was shade, bro. He was a guy that was that had other players there. You know what I'm saying? And, and I didn't understand that. I was like, why would he throw shade like that? But mm -hmm. at the same time, he put it in the air, especially in that you could see that if he said it like that and it was on camera, right? Imagine what it said around the vicinity. Right. It would be nice if Lenny was here. I, mean, I, I was out there at 4.30, and I'm here right now. Yeah. I'm showing the discipline that I have that this nigga don't have. I was there 4.30 in the morning, so that means how can you be there at 4.30, but he can't be there at 4.30. But of course he can't because he's a player. He's supposed to be in the house or practicing, right? Mm. But you're still highlighting the, neg the negative, and that's what happened. So maybe at the time, in my opinion, they felt like, nah, he had opportunities, and he just was like, this is a kid that eat, breathe, sleep, sh basketball. Mm. Mellow in them, when you hear the stories, even when he talk about them. He's a, uh, 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 you know, Zeus might have just touched him. Boom, God touched him and blessed him and put him on earth. Yeah. <laughs> These guys, he didn't have to do half the work they did and still was out there putting the work in. 
So they put him on a summer league team but my, yeah, and, but, gave, and, and gave him some light. But, but then it's like, all right, he, the LeBron game coming up. Let's not let him play that that's game. That's what I was about to say. But, 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 but isn't that but how life my, is, though? Isn't that how it works? Isn't that's, that how it is? Build you up to tear you down? That's how it works. Are we acting like this? they don't do that in life, nah, even, even nah, people? Yeah, no, nah, right? I agree. I agree. But at, <laughs> but, but at the <laughs> same time, it ain't like I didn't go. When I left the club at 4.30 in the morning and I got there that morning for the game, it ain't like I didn't perform. To a high level, so what are you mad about? You you just here to watch me. I gave you what you came to watch, but it also takes with you there. It takes like you have no. I you. get now. I get it now that that the people around him and that circumference of Adidas because he was an Adidas guy too. Mm-hmm. So I get it now. Who was he, Stu? Who was he? He was like a coach, mentor, Adidas like. Guy, like, you know what I mean? He had what was players. your relationship with him? I don't know. I don't, I ain't had no relationship Did with him. We was cool. Did you say hello? Yeah, I speak when I see him. That was about it. He won't know. Let's have lunch. Like, nah. Yeah. I, he was a dude that I spoke to here and there. He had players. Like, he had good players. A lot of people lift you up to tear you down. You nah, better, for believe, sure. that. You for better sure. believe that. I and agree. It's not their responsibility. They will set you up to, to fail. fail. Yeah, for sure. And we need to acknowledge that and understand that. And that's what we got to tell the youth. I do now. And I, I know you. I didn't know that. I didn't know that back then. I can see you know. And that's why I said that. You know, I can see you know. I can see that you could be out there teaching the kids and. And, and showing them a different path to learn from you, even in life. Nah, yeah, it ain't just about basketball, bro. Even I, in life, work it hard. Me, it took me through some, some like, um, excuse my language, but. It's yeah. okay. Yeah, this shit was a rough road, bro. It was rough. From then till now, it was rough. And people need to know. Like like you said, it ain't just about basketball. That shit put me in a whole different mental space when basketball was over for me. You know what I mean? Depression, mental health, alcoholism, everything. You know what I mean? Like that took a toll. You know what I mean? But then you got to find peace within yourself. How cl- how far to the edge did this push you? Because you know like- I don't like, know what you mean by that. You know what I mean by that. I just don't want to say it. I don't I'm gonna know. Cut, I'm going to have to cut the word out. No, nah, I, 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 I was never that close. Okay. Never, ever. I don't, play, I don't play like that. Okay. But I was just in a bad place, ne- didn't want to be bothered. Wanted gotcha. to be alone, didn't want people around me, cut people off, didn't talk to my family, didn't talk to my friends. Like, uh, it went that far. Like, I was in a bad place at myself. I was mad at myself. Sure. You know what I mean? And, then, and it's okay. You know what I mean? You grow out of it if you if you want to, and I chose to do so. When did you have the car accident? This said, was in two thousand and I want to say December two thousand and four. I think that's what it was. Pull it up. What's up, dude? Tell us about it. What happened? Great night for me. Great night. First game of the ABA. Tiny Archer bought my coach. We go to dinner. We get a good win. I talk to my man Peanut on the way to the game. Like, yo, I'm about to play in my first ABA game. Tiny Archer bought is my coach. Playing for the Long Beach Jam. You know what I mean? Have a great game. We win. We go to a team dinner. After the team dinner, we leaving. Me and my teammate going back to the crib. Bad weather, he wrecked the truck. Mm. Broke my femur, my tibia. I'm in the hospital for like nine days, bro. I'm thinking like, it's over. Bounce back. End up getting a job a year and a half later. Go to Brazil. No, I ended up going to Kuwait. I went to Kuwait after that. I was like, hell no, I'm not staying over here. No bullshit. Crazy over there? 
What? It was hot over there. Mm. Ain't no air conditioning or nothing. I was already fat being in the wheelchair and shit. I was trying to lose that weight, you know what I'm saying? I was already out of shape. That's the first time I ever quit, bro. Ever. I was like, hell no. Send me the f back home. You came back home? Did you, what, what's, uh, you went said back you home, went back to my mom crib. Mm -hmm. Sat around. You know what I mean? Just sat around. Doing nothing. Come on, talk. Get, you know, get yeah, to I, it. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't rush it. me. Don't rush me. Get don't rush me. It. Don't rush me. I don't want to interrupt. That's why you know we try to we try to do. I don't want to interrupt. How <laughs> Because you know I'm trying to. Cause we skipped some parts, but you know we got caught up in the whole LeBron thing. The part the part that we skipped was that, you know, you left Miss Debbie's house. Now Miss Debbie quoted. I mean, let me remind you what Miss Debbie said, just in case. She said Jeff introduced you. Right, um, Jeff introduced you to a person from Immortal Sports. Now I want you to be honest and tell Jeff us. didn't introduce me to nobody. Mm, now are you protecting Jeff? Not, for what? Uh, so what happened? Jeff didn't introduce me to anybody. Tell the truth. I'm go. in a club. Me and Damani, a runner comes to me and asks me, "Can I meet with him the next day? What is this about?" And Damani, I told him, if Damani can't come, I'm not coming. That's how that went. Jeff never introduced me to nobody. Let's get that clear. So where she got that from, I don't know. So what I would like you to do right now, because we weren't there, and I don't want to pull the story out of you, I want you to talk about the story because, you know, a lot of times when we it, 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 it behooves us I'm using the wrong word. <laughs> <laughs> I try to sound smart. Bass, like, what? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just called up. People be complaining in the comments. <laughs> like like, Yo, flip, you to no, a lot of times when we're telling the story, we wait for people to take the story out of us so we can prevent from actually facing the story, the truth of the story. So I want you to tell us what happened. I want you to say that word again. I, I just did. I just nah, did. Tell us the whole no, thing. No, 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 no. Nah. Cause a lot of stuff got to be in the book, bro. I I just told you the key parts. He met me in the club, told me the meeting such and such, such and such. That's what I did. He came and picked me up two days later. I left Debbie's house. She was mad. I was supposed to have been going to school. They sent the limo for me. I left and went to Michigan. You can't tell who the guy is. Nah. Was he a part of a motorsports? He nah. I mean, yeah, he will. He he was a part of it. Yeah, for sure. You can't tell how much money you got neither. Nah, we ain't gonna talk about that. But you talked about it. It's out room. there. It's out there already. But you can't say it. I, I'm done talking about that. Are you ashamed of it? No, hell no. Why would I be ashamed of it? But that can trip. That that would that, that would be considered a bad situation. Great situation in my time, in that time of my life. I mean, money wise, but yeah. it, it also. It, it, it was a bad situation. It was a bad situation. <laughs> yeah, we, I'm, nah, I'm done with that. <laughs> nah. But, I respect it. Nah, 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 nah. It was just, it was a bad deal, man. It was just me not knowing, not understanding the business of basketball. You know what I mean? Not understanding the business of a, having an agent, not having a rundown of who can market you, who can, I just, I just jumped on the first thing, no homo. I just jumped on the first thing that was presented to me. You get what, what was I'm promised saying? to you, though? You can at least say that. I mean, it was promised to me that I would be a lottery pick. You know what I mean? They offered me this such and such bread, and I was just like, all right, I'm signing. Because that was the best thing that ever happened to me. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, it was just like, like I said, not having that guidance. If I had somebody that was behind me that was willing to look at these contracts that I was signing and all of that, I would, I probably would have never did that. But you keep saying at the time, at the time, it was the best thing for me. Cause, but but the best thing for you might have been staying at Debbie's house. Because you just got some upfront money. Wasn't she giving you money? Wasn't she looking up? She wasn't giving me no money, bro. She was just making sure I had a place to stay. I was going to school. She wasn't giving me no bread. 
You know what I mean? Hey. Especially not like that. She gave you $20, though, on the show. Yeah, she gave me $20 <laughs> in the gym, for sure. But it won't, it won't that. What they gave me, especially not having a kid at that time. Mm. So I jumped on the first thing. Like how, I much need, how much figures was it? Uh, it was enough. <laughs> what you did with the money? Blew it. <laughs> so, but hold on. Do you feel like this individual that you don't want to name now? I'm going to find out and I'm going to name him. As soon as I find out, I'm, I'm on it now. You feel like this individual that you don't want to name, do you feel he took advantage of you? I just feel like he thought he was, I just, I feel like he just thought he was going to make more off of me what he gave me. He used me, you know what I mean? And a lot of people after that talked about it. A lot of people that he signed before told me about him, and they fired him, and they got rid of him, you know what I mean? And that's why he came after me, you know what I'm saying? Because he had players that was in the NBA that got rid of him already. And I ain't going to put their name out there either, but they know who they are. Oh, hold on, hold on. Mm. <laughs> now, 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 now let's talk. See, see, see. You used to be my man. <laughs> <laughs> LeBron. What's up, buddy? But, yeah. You got you now. I don't talk. We're going to wait. We're going to wait. We're going to wait. No, nah, you know. Nah, we going to wait. No, we're going to wait. Okay, okay. We're going to wait. We ain't going to have the camera on you. We got the camera oh, on us. Yeah, we're going to wait. Mark Cuban doesn't know Lenny Cook. Mark Cuban loved Lenny Cook. He loved the. I know. I mean, I mean this, 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 this is 2003. This yeah, he about. loved. I said past tense. Yeah, you did. You did. You did. But in the tangled world of NBA finances, where competition for clients is fierce and conflicts of interest can go unchecked, even Cuban emerged as a bit player in a cautionary tale of the former New York City basketball star. Yeah. Talk about it. You talk about it. I wasn't ready. You sat down in that hallway and told me, Flip, I'm ready to open it. Now you want to talk about books. Maybe, maybe, maybe we thought kind of fast. Maybe you, maybe you immortal in sports us. <laughs> you make me feel good. Like, my man, lady, will give me, are you, are you hit me with the immortal sport? Never. <laughs> I just feel like. If I, going back once again, True. if I had that right person that was guiding me in the right direction that know the business, all it, it's a lot of people that I was around that know the business. Why would I end up having to sign with somebody I meet in the club? But but if Mark Cuban signed you, I know it wasn't him that met you in no, the club. No, no it, it was, was never a, Mark you said, Cuban. You said, a, you said a runner. It was never Mark Cuban. It had nothing to do with Mark Cuban. Mark, but he... He wasn't a part of the company. Mark Cuban, Mark, Cu Mark Cuban never sent nobody to me, never did none of that. Respect. You know what I mean? The dude from Immortal Sports was from Flint, Michigan. Mark Cuban may have a relationship. I may have. Let's say that now. But I know for a fact. I talked to Mark Cuban. I was just guided in the wrong way, bro. I just took what the first thing was offered to me, and I shouldn't have. It's, it's, it's simple. Get it, go I, ahead, go ahead. I see you smiling over there. Mike Harrison. Runner. What was Mike Harrison doing in the club that night? I don't know. I guess he was looking for Lenny Cook because he found me. Why you didn't let Miss Debbie go over the contract or the deal? Why you didn't tell her, Cook? Tell Debbie, me something, man. I'm going to be honest with you. Be real with your brother, man. I, I can't go I don't have no path. reason to lie to you and nobody else that's going to be watching this. I have no reason to lie. That bag came, I took it. It's simple. And it was a nice bag. Hundred thousand. It was a nice bag. It was a nice bag. Am I hot or cold? You, 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 you warm as a bitch. <laughs> 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 but, so, but 
nah. So if he, if, so the money that he invested, oh, this is it. He, the money that he invested in his mind, he thought that he would make a better. Of course return. he did. Of course he did. For sure. So he would have got like, I guess, if you was the first draft pick or the draft pick, he if I'd have been a lottery, period. He would have got which, money. Which back. I was promised. Going back to what we talked about earlier. This is what I was promised. Lenny, you did the workouts, you did this, you did this, you're gonna be a lottery pick. This is what they was feeding me. You get what I'm saying? So why weren't you a lottery pick? That I don't know. What did you think? Lenny, I mean, it, like I said earlier, bro, me knowing now, looking back, bro, it can't be nothing but my image, bro. Iverson already f***ed up that shit. He already was the first one to come through and was that dude always out, whatever, whatever. And then, I. I came right behind that. You know what I'm saying? AI was with me at the Wells Fargo Center. Well, I was with AI. Let's 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 get that clear. He tells me as soon as he sees me, Lenny, they was never letting you in, bro. They was never letting you in. He tells me that to my face. They was never letting you in. Not with that image. So he was taking a chance. He invested in taking a chance on me. All right, it didn't work out. But you still feel like you say he used you. You use that word. He used me. He did. He did because everybody else that he had that he was that he signed before prior to me fired him. And I'm talking about big name dudes. And I'm not going to say these names, I but that. I'm talking about big name dudes. He had. He did. And they told me, like, yo, he's not the one for you. But I had already signed. When did you realize that it was a mistake signing with him? When you didn't get picked? When draft night, June 22nd, 2002. Never going to forget that day. Never, ever will I forget that day. You know what I mean? Where were you? In Harlem. In Harlem. Where? <laughs> in Harlem. Chilling. Watching the draft. Chilling. Boot up. Chilling. Name don't get called. Whole night just like, damn. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a fuck messed up feeling, bro. Like, you promised me this. You Your name won't get picked within one through 18. First you said it was it. Juan Dixon get picked. Now you like, all right, wait a couple more. You ain't, now you ain't saying no more teams. Second round comes. Second round, bro, what the second round ain't guaranteed. Never get called, bro. Never get called, boy. I'm but you wasn't at the draft, though? You, you, you were in Harlem chilling. It was in the nah, Harlem, I, too. I didn't go to the draft. I didn't go to the draft. But if they called you, then what? If they had called? They the, called y'all me? They would have called me. Yeah. No, nah, they would have just called me, like, on the phone or whatever. Mm -hmm. But he would have called me. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. I'd have been watching the whole time. But he would have called me telling me, like, such and such, such and such. I ain't heard from that motherfucker since. You know what I'm saying? Didn't you kind of come up, though? Because you, you didn't have to pay that money back. Nah, he was all right. He was all right. You, you didn't have to pay the money back? Nah. So I'm just trying to figure out from... I'm just trying to figure out... Give me a second. Let me just put my mind to it. Process it for me. So, Mark, so, so, so. Are you still on Mark trying to, it won't Mark, bro. I mean, Mike, sorry. <laughs> it won't his Mark. Na, you know, his, his name is, uh, I'm sorry, so it's a Mark, call me with respect. Mm -hmm. Mike yeah. signed you. Yeah. Right, but I'm trying to figure out he signed you. So they you. take, they, they yeah. He, he, pro he promised you all this, he gave uh, you a big upfront money. Yeah. And he promised you all of this. Yeah. Did you have to represent? He was so he was your representation for sure. He was my agent. He was your agent. Yeah. Now you get an agent, but it's just like anybody else that gets an agent. What what did Mike do wrong? Or he was just so 
bad in the on. I mean, he, from, he was, from, he, was I, I don't know what he did wrong. Did he I mean, a, he lied to me. That's for one. That's the biggest thing you can do. That's for one. But at the end of the day, once once I didn't get drafted, now I'm hearing everything else about him from the other players that he had. So he lied to you, but he wanted you because 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 what did he really? I mean, he, he lost money, but it won't the it won't about the money, man. He got the he got bread. Like he he it won't about that. So he wanted you to represent. He his just company? wanted, yeah, basically. You know what I'm saying? Like he got a movie production. He got all kind of. Shit, you know what I'm saying? Oh. But. So he was once once these certain players got rid of him. I guess he thought I was the next hot commodity. So he took a loss as well, though. Yeah, that's yeah for sure. He did. But he just he, oh okay, I got it, I got it. So by him lying to you and you signing with him, it prevented you from if, signing with somebody, somebody else. Somebody else could have actually exactly got it, mm. got it. And then I hear it like, and I got great relationship with the people that was with him before. You get what I'm saying? So after that, it was just like, damn, I wish you would have told me this shit before. You know what I'm saying? And I'm talking about some people that you probably know that he had. But, yeah, that's how that went. Real quick, because uh, we skipped over this part. And Mark Cuban exited as an investor in that company. He, you know, he left. For sure, I know he that. Knew, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were blinded by the money. I was. It's no. It ain't no sugar coat in that. I was taking it. I was taking it. How long it took you to blow that money? A year. A year. A year. Quick, fast. Everything was up front. Everything, cash. No check. No. No. De- none of that deposit, cash app that you were talking. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time you spoke to? Uh, well, you didn't, so after the draft, you didn't hear from him again? No. After haven't that spoken day. to that guy, haven't seen that guy, none of that. Do you think that, what would you advise the youth or people in your position to do if a guy like um, Mr. Harrison comes up to them or sends somebody up to them to you? What would you advise them to do? What you would have done different? It goes back to that guidance I was talking about, man. Having that support system that's behind you for you. It ain't about the money. It ain't about none of that. You know what I mean? You got to be able to have somebody that's watching you and watching what somebody else is watching. You know what I'm saying? You got to have somebody that read that fine print. You know what I mean? I I won't read shit. I was signing. You know what I'm saying? I never, I didn't care. And that's what these kids, I mean, and nowadays they getting money early, like now, now. You know what I mean? The, what is the NFTs and all of that shit? Like these kids is getting paid early. So you got to have that support system, man. Miss Debbie, you still speak to her? Yes. You do? Yes. Checking every once in a while? Yes. Holidays, Mother Day, shit like that. Yeah, for sure. Tell us about the time, because my, like I said, you played with my man, Bino. Bino played with you. Yeah. Bino said that, you know, you guys met at IHOP with, 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 with Des, some Desert Storm people. For sure. And Shout Clue, out to my brother, DJ Clue. That's my heart. How you met Clue? I met Clue. I, I met Clue. I saw Clue at the garden one day. St. John's was recruiting me. And I asked him to come to my game. And he was like, where's your game? And it was in Jersey. And he was like, I'll be there. Him and Scotty B. You know what I mean? And he came to my game. It was 20 years ago, bro. And he's the one person that no matter what, he never left my side, bro. And I love him to death for that. Um, how did Miss Debbie allow you to bring up, start your own AAU program? You said how? Yeah. What, it wasn't about how. I just said I didn't want to play with nobody else. I want to build my own team. And that's what she was like, all right, well, we're going we're gonna to get a team. And you, you saw Bino playing one day and you wanted him? And I, when I met him, I was like, yo, bro, you got to play with us. 
You know what I mean? He was like, hell yeah, I'm playing. Wolfpack. 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 What about the other people? Everybody else just rock. You know what I mean? I knew everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Uh, God bless his soul, George Jefferson, uh, Shaheen. We had, our team was stacked. Our team was stacked. How long the Wolfpack was together for? For two years. And then what happened? We, it was time to move on. People, we was graduating and all of that, moving on. You know what I mean? I was leaving Debbie. People was going on about their way. You know what I mean? But man, I would tell you, as by know about them years, <laughs> we had some times, bro. What y'all was doing? All kind of shit. Like partying, party, <laughs> partying. All you want to do is all you want to do is party. Not no more, man. I'm old. It's time for me to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you wanted I'm to old. do this party. I'm Back then, yeah, I did. I did. Man, that limelight got to me. It did. It did. Damn. Mm. Mello, how did you feel about him when you played against him and stuff like that? What did you describe him to me? Mello was a great player. He was great. He was great. He was destined. You know what I mean? He was destined. He worked hard. He ain't want no parts of me back then, though. You know what I mean? But like I said, it goes back to him putting the work in. I didn't put the work in. I bust their ass, bro. Them, them guys, I played well against them. How well? To me, great. You know what I'm saying? To me, great. It's just the simple fact that they took the different route. Melo, Melo with the Syracuse, got a national championship, put his name in the draft. They wasn't fast. They didn't live the fast life. They didn't do the things that I do. You know what I mean? I was hanging with the wrong crowds. I was going to these parties while these dudes was in, getting ready for school at an early age. You know what I mean? These dudes was chilling, doing what they supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? And that's why they about to be, when it's all said and done, first ballot Hall of Famers. Hmm. Can't knock it. Can't knock it. Especially not me, not with Melo. Great, and he's a great dude outside of basketball. That's what I fuck with the most. Joaquin Noah. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? These dudes is genuine dudes outside of basketball. Right, right. Speaking of Melo, you know, on the documentary I seen, you, you went to the game uh, some years back. I think that, that probably touched me the most uh, for like watching the documentary. You know what I'm saying? Kind of seeing you go to the game and watching as a, you know, basketball player and as a fan of the That's game. The you know what I'm saying? Watching watching one of your one of your brothers coming up. You know what I'm saying? You went to the same ABCD camp. Yeah. Seeing him play, I, you know that that part kind of caught me a little bit. Like you know, take us to that day when you was at the game and watching him play. And after the game, him, him, the him co signing you too after the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nah. It was just like these are guys that I played with when we was in high school. You get what I'm saying? Right. He they both playing for the Knicks. My dream was to always play at the Garden. I didn't want to go to no other college but St. John's because I can play at the Garden on Sundays. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So, to see my bros, Amari Stoudemire and Carmelo Anthony and Joaquin Noah, they, they playing at the Garden, bro. It's nothing more that I cherish than that. No matter what, whether I'm there or not. You get what I'm saying? I can't hate on that. Right. How? Like, you did it. Like, you playing on your home floor, bro. Your backyard. That's every kid dream come true, no matter what city you in. You get what I'm saying? If you right. if you play ball, you want to play for your city one day. Even if it, you get traded, you want to play there for one, at least once and consider that home. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. How'd you feel too? Like you know, after the game y'all spoke, he he you know he co-signed you. Like you know, what does that do for your for your you know just just for your spirit and just for you just kind of. You know I, I mean, mean, even even before then, like guys lifted my spirit. Even draft night, like when I didn't get called, I goes to the draft party and like they boost my spirit, but that don't change shit. You get what I'm saying? Right. Like genuinely, 
they know that I belong, but I they can't blame they who can they blame? I can't blame them for you know what I mean. Whatever the case may be, dude, I did it to myself. Y'all, y'all names got called, not mine. So there's no need for me to sit here and try to sugarcoat why, oh, I need you to boost me up. And, nah, I did it to myself. Right. How many interviews you did? So, before tonight? Yeah. Maybe four, three, four. You did kitchen talk, shout out to my brother Mayno. Mm, for sure. Long. He the first one. And you You're the first three. one you reached did, out. You did three after that? Uh, two or three. How did those go for you? They, they won't, it won't nothing like this. It wasn't this platform or it won't kitchen talk platform. You know what I mean? Over the phone, Zoom. Were, were you, you know what I mean? Explain, I just do it for the kids. Were you able to express how you feel? Because you know it's a lot of pain, man. I don't. I don't. I don't. Certain situations be different because I, don't sh I can't share everything because of the plans that I got for myself. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So I don't talk about the same thing every interview because I don't want to share everything with one person. It's a lot of hurting you, though. You know that. It right? is. It's a lot of pain. It's a lot of pleasure, too. No, no, no. no. Let, let, leave the pleasure out. It's a lot of pain. <laughs> G chill, G. G chill, G. Yeah. G, you get caught up. Yo. G, no. Oh. oh. That's a heavy one, G. I can't move it. G. G. I can't give him the cool yet because he said that that's a lot of pleasure. That's a little bit. Hey, like, yeah, like, yeah. It's a little bit. Hey, G, you know, that's I, too much. Oh, that's, not yet. You pulled it from the sky. You got, yeah, you got one more, though. You got one more. Nah, man. but yeah. How, nah. How, how, how did you deal with the pain? Like, like, because it's a lot of pain, a lot of regrets. And, 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 no, nah, I don't have no regrets, bro. No regrets. Okay. Zero. Zero. I have, if I, I, yeah, I have zero regrets. You still I, if I could do things different, I would do it different. But I have zero regrets. That's real. Because I never expected none of to be honest. I don't have no regrets of what I've done. Ever. None. Zero. That word I don't use. Mm. Let's talk about the pain then. Talk about it. You said this lead you to led you to alcoholism. It did. Depression. It did. Wanting to be alone. It did. Going back to mom's crib, right? It did. Um, I even saw in your documentary when they came back. You know, they came back to the, to to finish filming, and turning into it. And the guy named behind the film, what's his name again? Adam. Adam. I don't keep saying his last name. I don't even. I don't even like saying Adam. What does he owe you, you feel? He don't owe me nothing. What did he promise He don't you? owe me nothing. He stole from me. He stole my story. So it's just that. He, I can never see him. I can never see him. Can, you, can you explain to me? I, I can never see him. I heard that you said it twice. I'm going to say it again. I can never see him. Four and I don't like now. talking about him. Okay. He stole my story. That's it. Changed. Did. Because I respect him. You respect other people before too, but. I know I like him a lot. And he, he, he's humble. You don't like talking about this guy? I keep, nah. Okay. Nah. I'm sorry. I, I won't. I respect I won't. That. I won't. He stole, he stole from me. The one thing I do, I don't do is steal. Like you stole my story, bro, and you ran with it and you got paid for it. Like I can't talk, I can't talk about you. I can't see you. But you did tell me that 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 earlier today in this conversation, for you sure, said, you said flip. They came to me back, and I said no, I didn't want to do it, but they convinced me to do it. Right, and you said Noah put his name on it. He wasn't behind it, but he put his name on it off the strength for you. On the strength for me. Yeah, shout out to Noah. Shout out to Joakim Noah. Yeah, and and then all this, so basically, it's another situation where things are promised 
and they're not coming through. For sure. So that does something to you because it will be the second time something was promised. First with Harrison, and now this dude. So it was like, do you feel like your heart allow you to get taken advantage of? I just, I, I just feel like I'm a genuine dude, bro, and yeah. I be getting taken advantage of too much, and I ain't gonna allow it no more. You know what I'm saying? It's just me. It's just me though. Why I'm you a can't... genuine dude, but I, I, that dude, I can't talk about. Okay. You can't sue him? I, I, I ain't gonna talk about that either. We right. we in the works. Let's move on. Kobe Bryant. Yes, sir. Legend. You met him, ABCD camp. Mm -hmm. um, talk about, uh, I guess like what you, what you got from him speaking to you guys that day? Like what did you take from him speaking that day? And you had a conversation with him after, uh, after he spoke also. I think you try to call them out one on one. I think you, that's what you said, right? Yeah. So that's two questions. First one, like you know, what what did he say to you guys? And like, what did you, you take from that? And then like, you know, what was the conversation afterwards with, with, between me you and him? Kobe was just basically like he was a kid that was in our shoes. You know what I'm saying? And he made it happen on his work ethics on being, wanting to be the best to ever play basketball, you know what I mean? And being marketable. He explained all of this to us, you know what I'm saying? Going back to, like I said earlier, your image, everything. He broke everything down to us, you know what I'm saying? And when he was speaking to us, it's like y'all speaking to me now and I'm sitting right here with 500 other kids behind me. But when he was talking, I felt he was speaking directly to me when he was talking mm -hmm. because of the things he was talking about. None of them other kids was doing. So I knew he was talking directly to me when he was saying, you want to go to the NBA out of high school, do it. I was the only one at that time was coming out of high school thinking about putting my name in the draft. Mm -hmm. When I when he was talking about the girls is going to be there, the clubs is going to be there, I knew these motherfuckers won't go in the clubs and shit. it was only me. That's why they put me front row in front of him. And he was saying those things directly to me. And I didn't understand that, like I said, until later on. Cause I never paid it no attention. All I know is Kobe was just a guest speaker for us. And I got a chance to ask him, when you gonna play me? That was my most memorable moment right. of him. You get what I'm saying? So everything else was just a blur because I didn't pay it no attention. That's real. So you think you had enough game to beat Kobe at that time? Listen, God <laughs> bless his soul, bro. <laughs> But I'm telling you, I would have gave him everything I got. Mm. Not saying that I would have beat him. Not saying he would have beat me. Right. But I would have gave him everything I got. And he would have known I was there. That's a fact. But he is a great. Like, it, you can't take it from him. But it, it it wouldn't have been no walk in the park. I hear you. <laughs> I got to think about this real quick. When you, when you, when you, when you hear, when you, look, is there? When you hear um, Sonny say he can be just another NBA, New, uh, not NBA, New York street legend, mm -hmm. what did he base that off of? He based that off of all of these people that come from New York that have a Lenny Cook story, bro, and I just been blessed with an opportunity to share mine. That's all. He based that off of the, like you said, you had Booger here. Mm -hmm. He based that off of uh, the flips. You, he based that off the Pee Wee Kirklands. He based that off of the dumb, dumb guys. You get what I'm saying? That's where he based that off. That's all. It's a thousand. It's a million Lenny Cook stories, bro. A million. People just don't share them. I ain't scared of who I am no more, bro. 
I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. For what? If I can help somebody else. That don't make sense. I see guys all the time. I, this year I was in Rucker, Dykeman, Gersh, everywhere this year, this summer. Mm-hmm. Just to show my face in the basketball world of New York City again. And the love was so genuine, like I was ready to fucking play basketball. And for guys to hide who they are, no, don't hide who you are, bro. You got an opportunity to change somebody else's life, no matter what you did after basketball. And that's what I don't get. But that's where he get that from. Like, you know what I mean? He he get that off of the New York, real New York legends, the Pee Wee Kirklands. Those guys, he considering me one of them, basically. And it's an honor to be in that category for real to me. To be honest, it's an honor. Well, mm. that was deep. So you don't think that he saw it because of your behavior? I'm just. <laughs> Their behavior was too. messed up too. You can curse now. Oh, no, I, yeah. I just don't, you know, I, I limit the curses. YouTube, I try to edit, but you can curse, you know? Nah, I mean, they're, they're, I mean, those guys did worse things than I've done besides basketball. You know what I mean? But to be mentioned in that category, bro, it's a list that I got on my phone. They said the top 25 players from New York City to ever, to never make it to the NBA. I'm one of them, and I'm in the high rankings of that. It's just an honor to be in there. It's an honor to be in that. You know what I mean? Rucker was my NBA. Rucker was my NBA. I got to play against some of the greatest NBA players that's at Rucker. You know what I mean? So I'm cool. I'm cool. Basketball is over for me. It's over. When Kwame Brown got drafted... The year before 2020, you. 2001. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that he messed it up for a lot of people? No. I just came at a bad time, bro. I, I did my research. I understand what happened. I came at the wrong time. You know what I mean? I came in the era of the overseas shit. We had fucking, I think, 13, 14 fucking overseas players drafted in the first round, bro. Right. You should have waited the next year. I should have went to college for a year. I should have went to college for a year. Uh, prep school. I was never going to prep never school. Never going to prep school? Never going to prep school. They wanted me to go to Oak Hill with Melo. It's not enough basketball for me and Melo. Hmm. Even though we'd have won a championship, we, me and him, can't, you can't shoot 34 shots and I'm going to shoot 44. It's not enough. We, we, these guys is going to be mad. <laughs> but no, nah, like I was. But if I if if I could do it all over, bro, I took I would have took myself to college, bro, and that's where I messed up at. Hmm. Okay. My man, <laughs> my man, Lenny. I think that um, your story is a unique one. Appreciate it. That many of us can learn from. Appreciate it. Um, discipline is, is, is something that's very important in life, and a lot of us, we lack it. Um, but the fact that you're here and you can tell your story, you have fresh Jordans on, you look clean, and you know you could be able to <laughs> let the kids and the youth know is, is, is extremely important, and I respect that. Nah, for um, sure. To follow your story, the fact that you're not beating yourself up anymore, anymore, mm. and you know you're looking at brighter days means a lot. You know what nah, I mean? For um, sure. When I watched your story, I was I it was sad. 
however they put it together, and they, you know, it's, I get it. I don't want to go into it, but it's just like, damn, son, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And maybe it was put together like that intentionally to look like I, that. I believe so yeah. because, like I said, I ain't got nothing out of it. So maybe that that maybe that was the case. But at the end of the day, it helped me, bro, because any publicity is good publicity for me, whether it's bad or good. You get what I'm saying? You, you Whatever you got from my story, bro, cool. I'm gaining a lot more by helping somebody, bro. You know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, at, if I speak to a million kids and I reach one, I'm okay. I'm okay. I just need to be the best dad that I can be, the best mentor I can be. You know what I mean? That's that's all. And if a motherfucker can't respect that, then all right, cool. You don't need to be around me. So speaking about that, you know, like talk about what you're doing now. You know, I, I knew you said it throughout the show, but just kind of go into depth about what you got going on now, as far as like you speaking to the kids and going to, you know, you you yeah. you traveling and talking to different, you know. Yeah, um, I be doing motivational speaking. I go to different high schools, camps. You know what I'm saying? I coach uh, AAU team out of uh, Hackensack, New Jersey, the Bulls basketball club. You know what I mean? And I just, I just, I'm just enjoying it now. You know what I mean? My kids is playing. My daughter is playing. Like I'm, I'm into it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I ain't been this happy in a long time, bro. That's what's I ain't been happy in a long time. In a long time. Now, how are you with your kids, though? They playing like how are you as far as like? Can you separate the coach and the, and the, and the dad? I don't part coach. Or? I don't coach my kids. Okay. I don't coach my kids. Got you. I don't. I don't. Cause that shit is different. <laughs> I don't get into that. I coached my son, my oldest. I coached him his last year, his senior year. Mm. He's my oldest. I coached him his senior year high school. I ain't coaching. I ain't coaching. I don't want to coach my kids. <laughs> You know what I mean? I just want them to just. You know, a, a part that we skipped is um, when you didn't when you didn't um, make the pick, you had the accident, right? And, and you had the accident in 04, right? You said 04? 04, 04, 03, 04, yeah. Okay. And after you had the accident and you was down for a year, you went overseas, right? And then, but... This, the Celtics, that was before the accident? The Celtics was before my car accident. Okay, got it. So after, after, so how did you, how, how did that whole thing work? Because we didn't ask about how, that experience of going to the Celtics summer league. What you mean? Like how did, how did they, how did you get there? My, the, the representation I had after Mike got me into the summer league for the Celtics. And how long you played with them for? This uh, summer league is probably like four months, three months. So they said you. They said you was. You know, I was, was good, bro. I was. I was good. I was really good in basketball back in my day. I was really good. Real cocky, nigga. I ain't cocky. I'm confident. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, you flip it over. I just saw you. See, now I'll be, yeah. flipping, I'll be catching when you flip it over because sometimes I'll be missing it. G. I'll be catching it off the joint. Oh, man. Oh, Keith. Leave it up like that. That's how I like, uh, Troy from Love Basketball. You gave it to him already? Yeah, I just I did it from the three point line. Ah, you cool, you cool. Yeah, yeah, funny as hell. He's not cool. He's not cool, G. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Why Put you gave him that for? Damn, man, ain't cool though. He deserved Damn. that. Yeah, he, he he called it earlier. He said he was cool himself. I just you know, I, I heard him. You heard it right? Yeah, that's it. You cool? Hell yeah. He played cool. ball. Nah, he, I'm you know all right, man. But nah, like. <laughs> yo, listen. <laughs> hey, yo. Um, yo, is there any final words you want to leave the people with before we wrap this up? Yeah, man, I just want people to know, like, don't judge a book by its cover. Like, I'm not that person that I was 20 years ago, man. I just try to do right by me, by God, by my kids, by anybody that's around me that's supportive, you know what I mean? 
like I said, shout out to everybody in Orange City. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody that support me in Virginia. Shout out to everybody that support me in New York and anywhere else. You know what I mean? Um, I'm I'm not that person. I'm not that egotistic person that you thought I was. You know what I mean? I made mistakes. Everybody make mistakes. I learned from my mistakes. You know what I'm saying? And I just want to be a better person. You know what I mean? I just want to be a better person. And if you accept me for that, I won't let you down. What do you think you could offer the youth these days? Would you train anybody? Would you, you know? I love training kids. I love working kids out in the homo. But, uh, yeah, like, you can reach me on social media. I am Lenny Cook on Instagram, Lenny Cook on Facebook. Like, I train kids. I work. I got a program, like I said, in Hackensack, New Jersey, that I, I, I coach. Um, I'm coaching at Bogota High School as an assistant coach this year. Like I'm doing, I'm. I want my book. I'm working on my book. I'm hoping that this platform can make sure my shit become a New York Times bestseller. Uh, like it's a lot of shit that I got in the works that I believe that's going to be successful because of the change that I made in my life. Respect. That's dope. You know, we definitely want to. You know. Uh Wish you all the best with the book, man. We definitely want to support that when, when it drops, you know what I'm saying? So we'll, we'll definitely, you know, uh, show love, uh, you know, as, as a unit up here for the script podcast, you know, I think we should definitely post it up or something, you know what I mean? Of course. Know, of course, yeah. Everybody knows what's going on. So. Nah, for sure. I just was happy to have, I'm glad y'all brought me out, man, and I ain't get mushed and pushed around and shit like that. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Not, not yet, good. not yet. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, no, it's supposed to be too soon. No, 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 no. I think that um I think that it's great that to, to have you up here, man, and um thank you, man. Nah, thank, thank you. you man. I think that we thank pretty you. much touched on everything. Uh, I think that you gave us an adept interview as much as you could. Thanks. I hope this is a good one to you. you know nah, I mean? it will be. I know it will I be. Mean, and I appreciate it. Round of applause for Linda Cook. All right, my man. Let's go. Dope episode. Dope episode. I like it. Sure, good. I like it very cool. Man. <laughs> Don't you take my line from me. Like Gee, Don't uh, you <laughs> take my line from me. <laughs> Uh, anyway. It's like actually like, uh, uh, yo, people don't know you do that. You got... uh, uh, I, I, I don't it's like, yo, you know what? That it's like you doing that to me. I, I feel the same. Remember you do that to me, oh, man. So, so you doing that? It's like, oh, okay. You oh. just walk out. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> no episode, man. Shout out to Lenny Cook in the building. Shout out to all my ballers out there, man. All the basketball players. Shout out to all the teams, all the AAU teams and CYO teams, and yeah, shout out to everybody, everybody man. You know what I'm saying. Um, Shout out to my family. Shout out to fans. my supporters, Thanks. the ones that love me the most, bro. Like shout out to Z. Shout out to my sister Paula. Shout out to my old lady Chrissy. Shout out to all my children. You know what I mean? I, I thank y'all. Thank y'all for sticking by me. I appreciate you, mom, dad, my siblings. I love y'all. How many children you got? Shout out to all of my all children. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, listen. Like I said, dope episode. Shout out to all the bowlers, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, I would try to call them out one on one, but I, I don't want to make the mistake on camera and, and, and look crazy. So uh, you, you still got it, you think? Got what? You still, you still? Ain't too many people can fuck with me. Still? Now. Right now. Right now. I, yeah. But you don't, you don't play no more, though. I do. I, I get out there when I want to get out there. When you're when you ready. Yeah. I ain't gonna call him out. I'm leaving. Nah, right call now, call me out. No, 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 that's all right. You, you got it. Me, me, me at Chelsea Pitt. Me and Chelsea. Clue be, me and Clue <laughs> oh, be at Chelsea Pitt. I heard Clue be up there. Yeah, we'll be out there. We're trucking them all over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll be. be out there. Just meet us over there. Uh, <laughs> G, G, don't let them tell you that, G. What do you think, Flip? Got, Hell yeah. I'm gonna tell that? you that, man. Who cares? I'm a little rusty, man. I ain't gonna play like he's like, he's still be playing. He's old now. He's old now. You get him. Nah, I'm getting old. I'm getting old. Yo, man, listen. We out of here, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you follow the pages at DJG Money Official, at Queens Flip with a Z, at Flip the Script Pod, and follow the TikTok page. Also, shout out to the Audium Podcast also. They got a, a dope uh, sports podcast, you know what I'm saying? My man Barry Grant, shout out to him, you know what I'm saying? Salute, you know what I mean? So I, I think you I should definitely tap in. If y'all like sports, you know what I'm saying? I was up there a few weeks ago too. Dope, dope podcast. He's doing, he's doing his thing. So you got to show him love one time too, man. you know what I mean? Yeah, we out, man. Queens Flip, shout out to Audium. Shout out to Tab, clothing line, my boy Fat Boy. Okay. Uh, his people's Tab clothing line, been wearing it. Salute, Shout out to Bino. For, you know. Bino. 
What up, man? Uh, I want to see. I want to see if Bynum still got it. Blood of gold. Blood of gold. I want to see if Bynum still can play. I gold. asked him. He said, "Hell no." I play. I played ball with Bynum a couple of years. I I was like, Bynum's a big guy though. Like, Bynum's yeah, Bynum nah, a big guy. guy. I think. I think. Bynum ain't little. He, I think we played guy. at Wilkins Park. Bynum, Wilkins. Really? On the, we was on the same team though. We played with some like DJ versus promoter game or something. I think this was probably like five six years ago. I don't know. We, Wilkins Park. Shout out to Bynum, man. I'll be stacked bundles. Listen, man. You know, dope episode, man. Shout out to Bassy. Shout out to uh, Tati Tuesdays, and you know, um, shout out to Ebok. He made it. Baca 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 came, Baca Baca came through today. It was good seeing him. Good guy, man. Yeah. He's a good guy. He, <laughs> just, like, he just got like a good energy. He just walking like he's so nice and polite. Yeah. Like, yeah. how you doing, sir? How you, going? how you doing? Shout out to Baca Baca Baca. Baca. man. Listen, man, it's a classic episode. I love it. Facts. Um, shout out to Lenny Cook, man. Remember, lock your doors, close your windows, close your blinds, open your blinds. But step out the house. New one for me. I don't know how to... Meet Lenny on the lawn. Put it away. He don't mean any harm. Give him a hug. Because that's going to help you and him go on. I'm from Queens. <laughs> <laughs>